Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. So um, <coughs> I'm going to continue on. We're going to get into some more of the uh, more advanced cast capabilities within WordPress. Um, we're going to review the plugins, and then I'm going to turn it over to Ed, and I think he's going to talk a little about VTools. Uh, are we doing that now, or are we doing that, that? I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll so check with We'll it figure out. out what we're doing, and then we'll do it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so. Let's start off with contact forms. So to do this, you need to install um, a contact form plugin. Uh, we're using contact form 7. And um, everybody uh, wants donations, so it's always a good thing, you know, donate to the, to the plugin creators. But when you do that, um, you'll be able to create a new, new form. So here are some of the forms that I've created. This is for... Uh, this is for our Region 6 Career Expo site. And when you create a new form, uh, you will be asked to uh, enter the, uh, the data for that form. So here is uh, who you're going to send it to. That's my, my, user, my email address. Um, and then these are contact form fields that uh, you're going to plug in. Yeah, and in this case, I entered a subject of rising stars um, for the, and then and then put in the subject, and then you can you can put in anything else in here if you want to. Um, if you want the user to be able to email you a file, um, you're going to need to be able to build that into that form. Um, this is your body. You can play, pipe in there whatever you'd like to as well. I can see I need to do some work on this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. These are some of the actions that will occur if the user successfully or unsuccessfully um, makes this form work. So I am going to suggest one thing that you want to change if you use this particular plugin. Um, the success, no, the failure messages on these two items are so close that you can't tell what they are. And so I, um, I changed this to failed to send message and then um, so I eliminated the your in that one. That way I can tell at least if it fails, why it fails, if it's uh, just a failure to send or if it mm -hmm. was referred to as spam. So that's kind of a, a nice yeah. piece there. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> the form itself is uh, this. So you're, <clears throat> you're, you're using, what did you call them, um, Ed, quick links, short links? So these, these fields here, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there are are fields that you would. Um, yeah, but those, the, but those don't go in the form. The, there's a um, there's, there's the um, there's a fields generator that you can right. use to generate right. some of these forms. Right. And so, like right. the, the the asterisk means it's required. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so some of this, like this captcha, is right. actually an additional plugin um, that you would use and then generate the fields for that capture that you'd use to put in the form. Right. Question. Yeah. Where does, when people respond with the contact form, right, mm -hmm. the contact, are they going to be in the database inside no. on the website or no? no? Mm -hmm. well, how does that work? So that emails you their contact information. At least that's the way this plugin works. Yeah. Okay. There are yeah. other plugins, I believe, that will <clears throat> take that data and insert it well, into a database. Well, but there's a related plugin, uh, Contact 7 database or whatever, that records everything that was put into any form that was used into a database. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and so yep. the only problem with that, I find, is that so if you have seven forms and you only want you only really wanted to record one of them, everything that, and all seven forms is everything's going in. It's it's like one, it's an all or none. Yeah, it's not it's not really uh, a useful one. But there may be other plugins that aren't uh, the IEEE plugins, for instance, that may work yeah. for what you'd like to do. So uh, the, the, this will be directly uh, forward to the email 
uh, yes. email to the person, the emails on there? Whichever, e whichever you put here, and you can add additional um, addresses, just comma separated. Right. And you can also add a CC field uh -huh. as well. Add the CC field. Yeah. And do a CC or BCC, whatever yep. you want to do. Yep. Yep. So we're, we're currently, we use this on uh, Rising Stars, and we're currently using it on the Region 6 Career Expo yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. See, um, where, it, where it says additional headers, that's where you put the BCC yeah. would go in there. So, for example, when you do the Red Rising Star registration, what mm -hmm. do you do? Do people use the contact form, or they you register by something? So, tools? Rising Stars we used, for registration, we used Eventbrite, which I'll get into in uh, a little bit. Right. Yep. But um, for, uh, for, for just general um, contact information, we used this form. Okay. And then for the uh, Region 6 Tech Expo, the um, companies that have interest would use these forms to, um, to email. Oh, so, so essentially they email to you, you just keep up on the email mm -hmm. list. Right? Yep. In fact, on uh, the, the micro-volunteer project that we have going, we're using, we're using these forms. And um, I think it's Chris, he's taking all the information and just compiling it into an Excel spreadsheet oh, so from the emails. Use this to compile them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there are hundreds comes in. Sometimes That's correct. Yeah, he's, I, don't, I don't know how many he said he had now, but. So how did, is there some automation? No, that? Don't have, I don't have anything for, for that so right now. So people can just, just directly write to the database now? Yeah, like there's that. nothing right now that, I, that we've got for that. No, no good solution under IEEE. Again, there's probably a solution for generic WordPress sites, the plugin that you could plug in there. Yeah. So the, um, I guess, what will happen if when they do the attachment or they write, have some spam in it with your Akismet or something will find it? So, so for one thing, um, we, that's why I used this CAPTCHA. So that requires that the uh, the user, assuming it's a human, be able to read this five four-digit number and then plug that number in. Oh. So that's that's why this is on here to um, to get past the spam uh, robots. So if you've got um, there, there are some robots that will go out and they'll just plug data into these type of forms and just send it to you. So you get a you get you, it, it's just junk coming through. So at least with this, it shows that you've got a human user or a very smart robot. <laughs> oh, okay. That one, huh? Yep, yep. So you and want I'll, to send that to us, right? I, I will. Um, so I'm going to go over CAPTCHA in just a minute. Okay. Yep. So, and there, hey, there it is. What do you know? So I'm using uh, the really simple, simple CAPTCHA plugin. Um, it, it's really simple to use. You just activate it and plug the, the code in, as I just showed you in the form. Um, yeah, so once you've got all of that set up, then um, you know you can produce a form like this that I, I told you about before the break. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Like I didn't catch the oh. C A P T C H A. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the one I'm using. There are um, numerous CAPTCHA plugins. I will say that, and even in a, even in our IEEE tool set, we have I think three or four of them. So I just use the really simple one. Works nicely, and so that's uh, and you end up with that. Um, so one other thing that if you're developing websites, you need to know more about how your users are using your website in order to better provide them with a better user experience. So um, on IEEE, we use this plugin called Counterize, and Counterize has a lot of different other um, plugins and things that you can look at if you're so inclined. So, for instance, um, you know, I, I I don't look at the browsers that people are using, but you know, if you're interested in what country they're coming from, their IP addresses, what keywords they're using to find your site, uh, if you are very interested in their operating systems, um, outlinks, what they're doing after they leave your site, what pages they go to. So, there's a lot of different statistics that you can glean from this and figure out what is working and what isn't working on your site. Oh, so th th does it um, count the number of uh, the numbers which, mm -hmm. like from uh, Spain, like yes. count the three of them from Spain? That's yes, the point? that's exactly the point. Yep. So here's, a, here's an example of some of the reports. Okay. 
Yep. So if you go, once you've installed this plugin, it'll um, put this on your left menu, counterize. And if you click on that, you can um, click on various sub pieces to that, or you can just hit the, the page. And the page has all of the statistics that it gathers. So it's kind of a, a useful one. So in this case, this is for our Region 6 site. Um, and for the period that we've, we're, we're looking at here, we had uh, 22,000 so or so hits in the US, a uh, big chunk from China and France and the Ukraine. I don't know why we always get a lot from uh, France and the Ukraine, but that's good. <laughs> if the visitor to the site looks yes. like yeah, Fantastic. yeah. So every time, every visitor that comes and visits the site, um, there are um, tags that are associated with that visit that come from your browsers. For instance, if you were to go to our Region 6 site, um, the site itself would capture um, what browser you're using, for instance. You know, it's just part of the, it's part of the, H, the transfer there. Um, the ones I'm more interested in are things like hit counters. Um, I, I was mentioning to, to uh, uh, you earlier that the IEEE Region 6 site, when I got it, we had about, I think it was 40 unique visitors for the year. So it wasn't a real popular site. Um, and so now this is, uh, uh, in the last 30 days, we had 3,300. So for me, that's a big improvement. <laughs> and it's one something that I'm really happy to see that people are starting to use the site more. Um, and you know, if you're interested in the hits of the day and the month, hits for the current month, you can look at it by hour. You know, maybe people are, maybe more people are coming by uh, your site during lunchtime. Okay, so if you post new content, maybe you should post it around that time or, or before that time or after that time, you know, whatever your marketing structure is. Um, another one that I like to look at is where are they coming from? So, you know, we get a lot from Google. Uh, these, I don't, I still don't know why these are, but uh, you know, I trip WWIEEE Region Six. How is that a referring domain? I don't know, uh, but but that is. And then we get Google, we get Yahoo, um, you know, some of this other stuff. You know, I guess these are Bing down here. So there's most the majority of our traffic comes from Google, which that's the most popular search engine. We already knew that. Um, where are people going? This is a critical piece to your site. If you want to know how your site is used, look at this. Okay, so the home page is the most popular. It's not unexpected, but I still don't understand this one. We have outstanding life member groups announced. I think, I think there might be a, a, a post about somebody uh, famous with the same name dying on that site. That's why people go there. I think Bill Murray. I think Bill Murray is the one that's on there. So that may be why people go to that. Um, region 6 information, this is where we list all of our uh, contacts for regional officers. So obviously people are, are visiting that site. Um, the calendar, calendar has come up considerably since I put that up uh, and uh, people are using that. So you kind of get the idea. You Oh, here's Bill Murray's site right there, you know, Bill Murray's page, but um, there's, you want to look at this and pay attention to how people are using your site. That way you know what to make changes to if you need to, to drive traffic to those, those pages. All right, so that's kind of the, the counterize and the statistics side. Let's talk about theme customization, which we've already talked about, um, so I won't go spend too much time on this. But So this is the, um, the, the customization for the Rising Stars Conference. And here you can see that um, you can change the new header. Um, these are some of the uploaded headers I used previously. You know, this one didn't quite fit, so um, I changed it to that one. Um, you know, you, you, can, you can change some things in the themes, some things you can't change. Um, another, good another good plugin is the redirector. So this is the simple 301 redirects. Um, and this is, so let's say somebody comes to your site and they want to look at, uh, we, we want to associate, let's say, another site or another page with our site. So the IEEE Rising Stars Conference, right? People can go to the IEEE um, Region 6 site slash Rising Stars, and that will redirect them to our Rising Stars dedicated site. This does a couple of things for you. 
If you're hosting a conference and you want to get high on the Google search engine list, this gives you two hits into that Google search engine um, statistics. So it, it's nice um, if you're trying to get more interest in your site. So we should do that with a hackathon. And I don't know if that makes GMCC sense yet. We'll talk more about search hackathon. engine optimization real shortly, but um, it, it creates a, a doable link. It's really easy to use. So here are some of the, the re redirects that I've created. So let's see, VC. So OK, because of the R6 Career Expo. So this is the new site that I'm putting together. Um, and now if you go to IEEE-region6.org slash R6 Career Expo, it will take you to the dedicated Region 6 Career Expo site. Okay. Um, and some of these others, you can, you can like areas and sections. These are two pages. We used to have our contact information split up into areas and sections. Well, I combined that and created a redirect to take us to just the one page. You could do that as well. I think you can anyway. Yes. Yeah, you could do that too. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. We should do that. That's a good idea. Um, and then uh, for Rising Stars, we set up a uh, virtual conference site and redirected that to Vicopius. And that all didn't work out, so but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, but we had that set up. Uh, the Map Press, so um, Ed talked about this a little bit already. If you want to add M Google Maps into your site, um, just activate the Map Press e Easy Google Maps. It's that easy. Simple or easy? You're getting the, you're getting the idea here. <laughs> um, so when you're in the in the editor, um, let's see, did I do that? And I did that backwards. All right. So within the editor, you'll if you have a map press plugin activated, you'll see this interface, and it'll look just about like that to start out with. And then you'll click Add, and you can create a um, a map, you know, add a, add a point of interest, and it'll bring that up in the Google Maps. You can add multiple points of interest if you have more than one that you want to add to the map, and it'll put a little balloon on them. Um, and you can set a size, so you can do one of the standard sizes, or you can create a custom size, and you can add a title to it. And then it has this ID. That's the, that's the critical piece. So then you'll save that. Did I save that? No. Let's see. I saved it anyway, and then it'll give you a link. Yeah, it'll give you a link, and you'll add the link to your text uh, for your site. So this is again one of these short links that you'll plug in to your site, and the WordPress will interpret that later when it regenerates or when it generates the page, um, and and put that map in there. Right, and that's a, that's one of those short codes. Yeah, short codes. Sorry, not short. Yeah, codes. it's in square brackets. Yep. <clears throat> Okay. I'm not sure what happens if you put something that's not a short code in square brackets in your yeah, post. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good, that, 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 maybe that's how you do comments. <laughs> I don't know. It may, um, maybe everything's interpreted. I don't know. All right, so then I already talked about this a little as well, but I want to reiterate on it. So this is how you would add categories. So again, when you create a post, you can assign categories to that post. So it, for instance, I could assign, um, I could create a post, assign it to awards, and then if I take the award, the category awards, and I move it into the menu structure, then it will, um, it will list that here. So this, as I said, this is our awards uh, static page. Any posts are in the awards news, um, and then I have a couple of other static pages as well that we've created. So now, anytime I create a post, assign a category of awards to it, it will show up when in the in the page here. I don't know if that makes sense. All right. So if I click on awards, I get the static page. This is this is our awards static page. If I click awards news, I get the awards category. And so all of the posts that have been assigned category awards show up sequentially from newest to oldest down the list. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's, this is the blogging aspect of uh, WordPress. 
All right, search engine optimization. So when we go back into the editor for both the pages and the posts, you'll see um, if you have this installed, the WordPress search engine optimization by Yoast, um, you will see this. And so here it will, it will pull a lot of data from the page that you created, the content that you have created in your page. So you want to do this kind of as a last step, which is why it's all the way at the bottom. So you can plug in a keyword. Um, in this case, this is educational activities newsletter, so I plugged in the keyword of education. Um, and then the search engine title. It'll pull this from your title of the page. You can change it if you'd like to, but you don't have to. Um, you want to put in a description here. So the meta description um, is if you bring up Google and you search for, um, uh, let's say, DeLoreans, and uh, it'll put up a list of DeLorean pages. And uh, the, the, each page then will have some kind of description underneath it. That's where this comes from. So you want to include that in there. It's important as well. Um, and then you can put in um, meta keywords, specific meta keywords, if you want to as well. But it will pull those from the page. OK. Um, all right. So why is this important? Any ideas? Any, who's, who's done search engine optimization before? Anybody? You have. OK, so we only have one person. All right. So back in the day when we were creating static web page and websites, you could put in these things called meta tags. That's what this is doing. It's creating those meta tags for you automatically. And those are important because when the search engines come and they, they look at your page, they they look at those meta tags to see what is this page about, some of them anyway. Uh, and they, they will use these tags. And if the content has, for instance, the keyword, and somebody does a uh, uh, search for education, that gives it two, let's say, two um, hits versus a page that doesn't have a meta keyword of education. Okay? It may have education in the content of the page, but it may not hit the two links. So this is a way to get your page, your content, higher on the search engines than any others. So that's why it's important. All right. Um, OK, so vTools. I'm going to cover this. For those of you who aren't involved with IEEE, this may not make a whole lot of sense. But for those of us with it, this is huge. Um, because we, are, we do, as I said, a lot of event-based um, uh, programming for IEEE. So the IEEE vTools events requires an IEEE login to add the data. When you do that, you can schedule a meeting. And um, so this is like for this meeting, Sheree probably put in um, this data into this form for this meeting. And so it shows up in the all-in-one event calendar for Region 6. If you go to Region 6 right now, look at the calendar. You'll see that for today's listing. Um, it just automatically appears as long as the calendars are set up to pull the feed from the vTools. If you need it to show up instantly, you have to manually refresh that feed. And I'll show you, I'll show you that in a bit here. This is the form that you'd use. Um, so you plug in your title, your description, and there's a bunch of other fields down here. It's only about three pages long. <laughs> um, so, but those, those are critical to get your data into the calendar. So the other thing is there are applications, uh, remote control applications. I know for the iPhone and the iPad, I have them on my iPhone and iPad. I don't know about Android phones. I'm sorry, I'm not a, an Android user. Um, there probably is. But um, if you would like to be able to manage your site like from here, let's say you're here and you have a, a blog site, and you're saying how great uh, Lance's talk is. <laughs> it is, yeah. That's what I. That's what I figured. Yeah. So you. Okay. So there, confirmed. There is an Android and, app. And it's the dashboard. It's just the dashboard part of the site. It's nothing it, because you use your browser to look at the site. And so. Yep. Your these these applications are limited. I will say that. But you can take a picture, for instance, and you can write some text on a page. You can create a post. Um, and, and get yeah. that all from your phone or your tablet, create yeah. it. But 
what I found is like the pictures, there's no scaling of the pictures. So my native iPhone picture shows up in the page, which is like gargantuan, right? Yeah. It's huge, and there's yeah. no way to change that well, in the application. Well, oh, they won't let you uh, click on the thing and then go in and put the scaling in? Not on the, uh, not on the iPhone app. Can you anyway. see the text? If you can see the text, you can, you can, go, that you'll go, you can go in and you can put uh, uh, on the image uh, tag, you can put... It uh, doesn't work that way. doesn't work that way? No. Nope. Okay. So there's, there's some limitations, but uh, it is kind of handy if you are doing some remote work and you have to absolutely get something online, you can do it with that. Um, all right, so let's talk about e-commerce a little bit. I think this will be more interesting to folks. As we've said, there's no credit card transactions on IEEE WordPress sites, but there are ways to still to do e-commerce. And so for conferences, um, we've been using Eventbrite. I'll show you that in a minute. And then if you're selling items, uh, you can use Amazon, PayPal, or uh, some other e-commerce engine. Um, we have, for instance, a company that's uh, creating promotional items for us. They're going to sell those items on their website, and we will link over to them. So that's how we're, we're going to do that. Um, Eventbrite is a great site for setting up if you're registering and require payment um, for, for registration. That's great. It is not, they do take a percentage. I thought, I thought they had the thing if you're a non-profit. Oh, that's right, non-profit. It depends on your status. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I have been paying percentage. Have you? <laughs> Just, yeah, you need to set up your non-profit. They'll, they'll require um, a okay. page. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a, a taxpayer ID and some okay. some information there. But yeah, you can so set you that can up. have no percentage. That's right. Know about that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's that's good. Um, so this is what we set up for the Rising Stars conference. If you clicked on register for the conference, it would take you to this site, and you'd get uh, an idea of what the fees are and so forth. So obviously, this this is ended. Um, it's time based. Um, from an Amazon perspective, if you, again, if you're selling items on your through your WordPress site, um, this is an Amazon link. Um, I haven't used the Amazon or PayPal link, so I, I can't tell you too much about them, but I will tell you that they exist. Uh, it looks like you can set up you know, your Amazon store right on your WordPress site, which is really neat. And then this is um, your, your simple PayPal shopping cart. There's a couple of PayPal plugins that are really useful. This one um, is one, and then the other one is uh, this one here. And then there's, there's another one that I didn't put up here, but if you're, again, if you're a nonprofit and you want to get donations, you can set that up with a, a there's a, a PayPal donations plugin as well, which is kind of neat. So here's some resources for the, um, the PayPal plugins and the Amazon Web Store. Um, I would strongly encourage you to go down this path rather than setting up your own secure servers. I've been down that path. Um, I'm not prepared to discuss all the details that are required, but it's if you like if you like looking at security logs on an hourly basis and feeling nervous about hackers getting into your site and stealing credit card information, by all means, go down that path. <laughs> Otherwise, stick with uh, somebody that's already done it and monitors it. To pay for it, don't you? Because it's under the it's a premium it's a premium plugin from yep. WPM UDev. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Do they do they all have to be paid for the PayPal ones or just that? There one? no. So there's some free ones here. So these two are free. Okay. Yeah. These two are free. There was uh, there's there's several that are free. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's see. So I was going to show you, um, go back to uh, showing you some stuff on here. Uh, not that one. This one. No, not that one. Where is it? What is that one? So I've kind of shown you 
what some of the stuff looks like, but I wanted to just kind of go through it with you so you can see how it's used. Um, so we'll start off with counterize, and it's loading, I think. Yep, there we go. So, so as I mentioned there, you've got the countries that you could go through, and you can see all the different countries that come in. Uh, most visiting countries in 24 hours, most searched keywords. So these are what people are using to find our site. Region, we get a lot for region. Western region of the U.S. Okay, so, you know, all of those you want. Those clicked out links. So these are what people are doing after. So they're, they're leaving our site. So they're going to IEEE itself, or maybe they're going to the Rising Stars Conference site. Okay. Um, so you got to get an idea. There's a lot of statistics here that you can glean and you can look through and maybe get some um, insight as to how to better optimize your site for, uh, for, for the future. Okay. And let's see. Event, events. So I never really went over media, um, but I want to I want to do this a little bit. So you've got, you know, when you add when you add a uh, a new piece of media, which you can do that um, through this interface, not only through the uh, the word or the uh, the editor. So you you know you can just drag the files in here. I kind of showed you how to do that earlier, um, but you can also um, edit the media. You can delete things if you're no longer using them. So, you know, delete permanently, or I can edit this. Okay, so here's the, here's the link. So we were talking about where do you get the link for the promotional stuff. This is, that's, that's the page that you, that you got to go down. Oh, down farther. Yeah. Oh, no, that's still a page. Yeah. You have to edit. You actually, have this, to edit the photograph. Right. So uh, this is this is the file URL here. Sorry. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, it has a JPEG in it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what you want. You want so the you file URL. That. Right. Um, so let's go th let's go through and look at plugins. So I wanted to I wanted to go through all these plugins with you. So for the IEEE site, we'll just we'll skip through some of this stuff. Um, So there's the 404 notifier. Um, everybody know what a 404 is? It's like a page not found. Okay. Um, ad rotate. We somebody asked about uh, can you put ads on the site? Yes, you can. Um, ad rotate's a good one for that. Just. Uh, well, so it. Well, let's go to the settings for ad rotate, and I'll show you. Where was that? Is that under settings? Where is it? So this is the problem with plugins. They put their settings in different places. So you have to be, you have to know where their, where their configuration is. Right. Um, there it is. Okay. So we go to add rotate. I don't think we, we aren't currently using this. I'm getting set up to use this on our site. Um, so we currently have two advertisements, and you can pay for their pro version or not. Uh, so if we click on our setup, take a look at these. We have two demo images installed here. One's a 468 by 60 and one's a 200 by 200. They have um, expired, so you can set an expiration date up for them. So if we click on this, Okay, so here's the add code. So you can add this, for instance, into the promo site if you wanted to. Uh, you can save it. You can preview it. Um, you know, there's all kinds of settings and features that you can use here <coughs> in the ad rotate. But this is a this is a way to get advertisements up on your site. Yeah, that's a short code too. If you scroll down a bit. Yep. Yeah. I mentioned that. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got advanced custom fields, advanced iframe. I haven't used these 
Ajax event calendars. There's all kinds of different calendars that you can use. Right. Um, I'll show you how to do the uh, the, uh, the other the Google Calendar here in a minute. Right. The Ask them at we talked about. We're using this all-in-one event calendar. Um, this is the mobile theme switcher. So here you can detect it'll automatically detect if you're browsing from a mobile phone, for instance, and create a <coughs> simpler theme, a simpler uh, field to the the site. We haven't. I don't use that currently. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't. If you'd like to have um, RSS feed automatically posted to uh, different blogs on your WordPress site, you can do that with Autoblog. Right, so that, so that means you get the RSS feed and it turns into posts. Yep. Um, if you want to use avatars, I don't know, avatars, are they really used much these days? I don't know, but I they have little, they're little pictures that yeah. they can, if you're, if you're having people write blogs, but, but we're not using it for that, we're doing it for information. If you want to create the new Facebook, you can use that. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Face press. You can, uh, you can automatically block spam bots yeah. if you want to with bad behavior. Um, the better WordPress reCAPTCHA. So again, another CAPTCHA plugin. Right. Um, I don't even know what Blueberry PowerPress does. Add podcasting support to your blog. Right. Uh, if you want to create audio, audio right. blogs, you can do that. Uh, another calendar, which we don't use. Another CAPTCHA, which we don't use. Um, sticky posts. That's for categories. Because there are sticky posts by default, which means basically the posts always shows up at the top of the list. So if you had some generic information, like if you, whatever your post was, your, your blog was about, and you could have some kind of, for questions, contact me at such and such or something, rather make that be, oh, that would always stay there at the top of the mm -hmm. thing. Um, oh, there's contact force, form seven. Yep. Right. Collapse-O-Matic. Yeah. Wraps the context into a lovely jQuery collapsible div. I don't know what all that. Means. I have no idea. What we that don't means use it. I'm not, I'm not. If you're if you're really into HTML, that probably makes means something to you, but yeah. it doesn't doesn't mean anything to us. And tag clouds. I don't use tag clouds. Yeah. We haven't. Oh right. Well, the thing is, our themes. If you look, there's no widget that. Shows you this a tag shows cloud. It, yeah. So if you want to see your tag cloud, you'd have to you have to add the plugin to do it. Yeah. Contact Form 7 is what we're using. Um, there's, and there's different modules, so you right. can add hidden fields, right. um, send all fields. You can do the, the, the data. database, right. like what we, we talked about. Right. Um, but again, that database just takes all of the data from all of the forms, so we don't, we don't use that. Counterize, um, you know, we've got a, I have a bunch of Counterize plugins act, yeah. activated. Um, the custom CSS manager is something I really haven't done much with. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're using it, by the way. We are using it. But yeah, you can you can uh, use that if you are ah, yeah. wanting to change the look and feel of. A, yeah. of well, the are there some page. examples we can show them later? Okay. Of that, because that, that uh, yeah, it's probably useful to show them. Okay. Um, if you want to create um, a, a Google search instead of the WordPress search, you can activate that plugin. Yeah. Um, the custom post type user interface. So, well, you can read that there. It's yeah, that's for, more advanced. Yeah, we don't we don't use it. Um, you can use you know here's another contact form seven plugin, duplicate posts. So you can create if you would like to create duplicate posts. I'm not sure we haven't used that either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's dynamic widgets, which you can create different widgets on different pages. Right. Right. So if you have a particular, some particular context or con content, and on that particular one, you might have a widget that had, might have some special things that only, only apply. You can do that. So this is a, a slideshow easing easing slider light. Yeah. Um, so the, the slideshows is like, um, like it's like the gallery except it rotates images. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And WordPress I think has that built in now, so that may not be such so, so much required. Yep. All of these plugins, I'm assuming, were required at some point by somebody in IEEE, so yeah. they're using it somehow. My question yeah. is how we attach like a PowerPoint presentation. 
Or you just upload the PowerPoint. Yeah, file. you'd upload it. You'd, so you'd upload media. it as media. As media. As mm -hmm. media in a page. Yeah. So yeah. And it would. And it would create a text link to that PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. So it's not like the content of the PowerPoint presentation would show up in the page. Yeah. It would show up as a link to a file. When you click, click to it, then it would load the file, download yeah. the Where file. Is the file? It's uploaded it's in, into WordPress. It's in, in the media. In the media, Me, media yeah. library. Can you show us a Yep, bit? I can do that. Because, like, for example, yeah. well, you we can have just, lectures yeah. and the people are asking yeah. me, like, what slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just scroll. Down. Down. we got to have a uh, somewhere in there. Uh, there's too many mm -hmm. JPEGs. Yeah, I, I did a lot of work oh, recently uh, on the awards. I think, you, I think the selector you can select things that are not that are not. Can you uh, the... Look at bulk actions, and and uh, no, no, mm -hmm. wrong one. Uh, no, I think oh, it's... look at Im look at uh, um, it, oh, it'll show you images, but it won't show you anything that's not an image. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there, so there's, there's, actually, column, here's one there's right instructions. Here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So that was, shoot. All right. So right here, there's um, an instructions. So this is an Excel file. Okay. It's the same. It's just it's just a document. Here's a doc file. Right. Right. So you can do the same thing. Oh, if thing you go with the, go to the PowerPoint uh, right there. Okay, so yeah. actually, if you go to the 2030, go to the 2030 well, uh, IEEE 2030 uh, post. Let me do this one. I, this will work. I know okay. where I know where this. Oh, that at. yeah, that's the PPT from the yeah. 2030. So you upload the PowerPoint to the library. That's correct. Link to the library. Yep. So right. you'd right. use this file URL, for instance, right here. Okay. So yep. that's the URL that you plug in, and then if we go to the posts, because I put it in a post, um, it was. Keep on going. The IEEE in 2030. Is it? Yeah, right that's right okay. in there. So if I edit this. Actually, just, yeah, right, yeah. And just do. Uh, How do you put, just to put the PowerPoint right on the. See, there's so the link. So that's it there's right there. Oh, okay. Yep, so that's so the link. So you click on the link and it downloads the PowerPoint file. Uh, oh, Oops. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't want to do that. All right. and just undo. Just, it could just do undo. Undo over I did it. Yeah, oh, okay. I did that. Oh, actually, so just, don't, just don't just don't save it, and you're fine. So video is a little bit different. Um, you would embed that in here. That's Can you that's. Show us on that one? Um, let me. See. I'm trying to think if I have anything that I could show you. Ed probably does. What's that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. So look on the insert and see if they have anything there. Yep. They, they've, they've they've added some new. Oh, an insert so video. Insert video right there. And, and then so you the put source, this. that's where you'd put the URL. So if you upload the video into your media, you could get the URL from that. Or if right. you upload it to YouTube, you could right. get the URL. Because see, there's the, the embed. The embed it has an embed thing too. So so right. you what so so if you have right. if you have the uh, get the YouTube code for the uh, for the thing, and you could paste the embed code in there. How about your code? So on YouTube, there was some, and you just pick anyone. So let's let's just pick a video. Anybody want to watch?
2030, yeah, which is, uh, it's, 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 old, it's older than latest. Yeah, I'll do a search. Um, search. Well, you can do a category. Try to cat what category would be it? IEEE News. Look for IEEE News category. You can scroll down. Yeah, look, look, look for IEEE News in the category. Right here? No, no, oh. up, up there. Look for IEEE News. I think I put it, I think it's IEEE News. IEEE in 2030. I saved it and it's not there. Oh, I think there's two of them. Be there. I think there's two of them. I think you added it and I added it, so I'm not sure. That might be the one that I did. Oh, let's go back and see here. So it's under category. So what category? Does it show us up? It is under IEEE News. Well, go back. Go, back, to, go, go, go back to this. Go back to the search. The video is gone. When I clicked save, the video disappeared. Oh, oh, because yeah, because the iframes are not a supported uh, tag. Did you link it? Or what did you well, it said insert inserted. a video and you put, put the embed code in and you get rid of the embed code. Let's sort of try video. this out now. Oh, okay, so let's go back to YouTube and try this again. All right. So even though it claims it may do it, it may not actually do it. Okay, so let's just see if it pulls it out here. It knows it's something because I put the big square box in there. So. Just do view post. That's the easiest no. thing to do. No, just do no, view it's post. Gone. It's, it's gone. gone again. So look at it on the view post. Maybe it's no, 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 it's no, gone. It's, it's gone. gone. It's, it, 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 it's, it's fit. It filters it out. Yeah. I have done this before. I'm gonna have well, to I've done it using advanced iframe. And then, okay. And you put advanced iframe in. And then you put the video into the advanced iframe plugin, and then that interprets it properly. So, so it's interesting that so you can't it really you really can't embed something. You know? Not without knowing what you're doing. It sounds like so. Yeah. Ask Ed when he's up here to do that again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we probably should go to the plugin. We should probably go back to the plugin, I'll go back to plugin. and we'll see if there's any documentation for the plugin. Yeah. You know, look at install plugins. So what, 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 what was the plugin, was it? No, this was just embedded. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'll, I'll keep going down the plugins yeah. list yeah. here. So you can get a better idea, a more idea of what we use. All right. So what do we leave off here? All right. So uh, easy team manager. You can create team members or short descriptions and social profiles. So we might use something like that for the IEEE organization information. Um, exclude pages from navigation. Yeah. So you can uh, any, uh, remove them from any consumer side page listings. Right. Facebook right. members. Like mem Facebook members. It bring, uh, brings like boxes, basically. Yep. Uh, you can add additional content short codes so the, the short codes like we've been plugging in for like the map blast you can add more in there uh, so that might be new and they might have put that in because the editor got lobotomized and yep. so people might have decided to put it in so. yep. another slider so this is another yeah. image um, slide yeah. uh, tool well, that, so you see, that's for the Genesis framework, and then I, I kept looking around. Do we have the Genesis framework? And I couldn't yeah. figure out what the Genesis framework was. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's stuff that people have requested that have been put in there by staff. What is slider bars? Sliders, uh, a sidebars or sliders? Oh, a slider. What slider? What the sidebar? So si slider is the uh, again the gallery that creates kind of a uh, a slideshow. Oh, slideshow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so sidebars slide. is the like the left and right side. Oh, okay. Slide, sidebars. Okay. Side, okay. Yeah, okay. Sidebars. Mm -hmm. yep. um, mm -hmm. You can create your own short codes with global content blocks. It's like all kinds of good stuff, including iframes. Yeah, I haven't I haven't invested yet. Um, if you want to use Google Analytics, another way another way to look at the statistics on your site, you can enable this page. Right. 
Google Calendar event. So um, again, I need to show you how to do Google Calendars, but this is another calendar tool. Google Doc, so you can embed um, documents from your Google Docs uh, folders and so forth in here. And Google XML. Oh, there's the site map. Because so, yeah. they had another site map plugin which went away, so they finally replaced it. Yeah. If you want, if you not don't like um, uh, contact forms, you can use Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms and Gravity Forms with Microchimp or Mailchimp. Sorry. So if you have a Mailchimp account, I don't. Uh, you can set the fave icon. So that's the that's the icon up here, like right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can set that if you enable that plugin. You can uh, you can do that. So that's what the IEEE is on the. Yep. There. Right there. Um, here, this is probably something we're going to start doing with is the IEEE single sign on. So IEEE members have a sign on to the IEEE site. We can also use that with our site. Right. Right. I'm, I, we, we, don't, but we don't know how to use that. We haven't used it, but I think we probably will to allow video yeah. content. I mean, so we'll, we'll probably need to check with staff to find out exactly how to set that up. What's yeah. the equivalent, not IEEE, but for WordPress SSL? Right. So that's where the, uh, what is it, the, uh, you look that up, it was the web user or, or uh, WordPress user. Somebody asked about that earlier to provide user access. Oh, 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 accounts, yeah. 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 Well, you, you can make user accounts for your, for your, oh, but it make you have to log in. Yeah, they're, they're coming, if you're looking for a um, plugin that makes it a members only site. So. There's a ton of different plugins that you can yeah, use for that. Okay. Um, so this inline upload, if you have, for instance, kind of a, a blog with user content, like let's say you've got, I don't know, a forum for your product, you could have um, inline upload that would allow users to upload images as well as create text uh, in, their, in that forum. Yeah. So that's how that one would work. Um, if you want to switch themes for an iOS device, rather, because we have the mobile phone theme, uh, you can also use an iOS alternate theme. Um, I don't know what issue embedding is. I haven't done anything with that. The Java query allows you to use Java jQuery. Um, obviously, there's a couple of those. We've got the map press, which we already talked about. Media tags allows you to um, to tag media and attachments. We already, we already. I don't know if you noticed, we have the capability already without this tag. Plug in, but you can add more functionality. Um, here's another slideshow of Meta Slider. <clears throat> Meta Tag Manager. So, um, again, this is kind of the search engine optimization side of things. You can add a meta tags with this. We don't use that because we already have a search engine optimization tool. Align Valley creates a short code to include content from another post or page. So, I think you were, you were asking me about how to embed images and then kind of zoom into them. This might be a way to do at least embed the images and not zooming in on it. But an image from another site is a little, that's a different matter. It's probably a plugin to do that though. Uh, next gen gallery. So this is a, an image gallery. Uh, again, next gen public uploader is another plugin that would allow users to put on media on our site. On swipe. So this is yeah. So this is a tablet view of your site. So next gen public uploader means any public can upload picture. That's correct. Oh. Yeah. So if I want to upload my picture, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, so the, right now it's on your IEEE Region Six. So can I upload a photo? No, because I don't have it activated. <laughs> I, I don't I don't allow people to um, comment on stuff, but if you did have that capability, this is what you use so they could upload an image to if you wanted to do okay. that. Yeah. Kind of thing is you don't know what they're gonna upload. Yeah, I can think of a I lot of ways to, to, allow to it, so I can think of a few ways that would be useful and a lot of ways to just use this. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. 
Um, page links too allows you to point to WordPress pages or, or posts or to a URL of your choosing. Uh, page lookup widgets the same same kind of thing. So here's password protected. Right. So this is the one that you would put on your site and you can get in without the password. But you can get in without password. No, no, you have to have a password. Oh, okay. Right. This is one that you'd, you'd set up to have password access. To uh, to be yeah. web faster, to do any post, is that? It's more like if, like you were talking about a video server where you'd have um, access to only oh. for people with a login well, no, to those th videos. This, I think, when you go to the site, it just comes up and says enter password. Yeah. So oh, you okay. can't even get to the site without typing the password. So, for example, you may log into a bank site. Mm -hmm. I need this so that they can let people to use the site that way. Is that no, it? no, that's have nothing to do with this. So if your site's under development, you get the password protected on, so nobody can see your site okay. until until you're done developing. Oh. This, yeah, this this looks like it accesses the whole site. Not just the whole page. site. Okay. Yeah, not just. Well, you can you can right click on visit plugin site and see what it. Yeah. What it uh, what the documentation says. But that's true. If you have any questions about any of the plugins, you can come over and look at the plugin documentation. Right. Hmm. It doesn't protect any images. Or because if you have a direct URL, you, know, yeah. you can probably just get to the URL. That's, that's the thing. With that. Whenever it comes to security, you have to be very careful about what you do. Uh, may not be the type of security that you think it is. Yeah. Another gallery. Yeah, so another gallery here. Um, this is the plug-in hog detector that Ed mentioned earlier. What is it? Oh. It, uh, deter it, it looks at all the plugins you have and analyzes to see how much time they spend you know, to load and things like that. So if you've got one that's really slow or taking up a lot of resources, you can identify it with this. I see. Uh, if you want to use Poll Daddy, um, we don't use this anymore. We, we used to use it, but IEEE now has the ability to create surveys and so forth. But if you wanted to create a poll on your site, you could use Poll Daddy. Posty, uh, so this is the uh, posting by mail features. Yeah. So you can email content in. Right. Ed mentioned that one. Uh, so post in a page, this is the one where you can actually have a static page and then have the uh, posts show up in it at the bottom of it, for instance. Yeah. That profile builder. So that means users are going to have profiles. So this is kind of where your avatars and things yeah. like that come yeah. into play. Yeah. Uh, Q translates uh, multilingual content. That's useful, right? Yep. So what, how do we use that one? Can you show us an example? Uh, I don't know that I have an example that I can look here. So Q translate. Probably as good as you can get out of Google Translate. Yeah. Um, I, let me understand that Q translate means that I can translate the whole page into Chinese, or is like when user goes to the website, they they uh, choose a word and have it translated into Chinese. It's more like it would take the page and translate it into yeah. bad Chinese. <laughs> yeah. I, I suspect that there's a there's some probably add something some icon and you click you know Chinese or English or something like that and it yeah. will redisplay the content and, and whatever oh, okay. whatever you translate. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. So oh, really, those, hmm? yeah, that work, really simple capture is the one that works with Contact Form Seven. Yep. So and if. For example, I need to have a web page to have a mixture of Chinese and uh, English, right? Yeah. I cannot input Chinese. Yeah, to uh, I think it can. You can. If you can copy, so anything you can put into Word, you can copy into WordPress. Oh, you copy the you copy the the the, the word in Chinese and mm -hmm. then put yeah, it back it. in there. Yeah, yeah just paste it. Paste in. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. okay. You're gonna ask a question. 
I just um, I didn't quite get this from from the start. These are all plugins that the yes. R6 website uses, or you just uh, people can download them from here. These are all plugins that Region Six and any IEEE site could use. Right? Yeah, or yeah. you you could use them as well because they're publicly available. Yes, so that's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not necessarily embedded in your website. That's correct. So a lot of these I haven't activated. So you can see here, like that. That's that's one I haven't activated. Uh, this one I have activated. These two I have activated. Okay. The, yeah. the more the more plugins, the slower your site will. It's because it's got more stuff to run through. Every but you still how many plugins do you have on average? You can't do any plugins. Oh. Well, well, so um, so IEEE has about 111, did you say? 115. Um, but those are the ones that we could load in. So those are the ones that are installed but not activated. Uh, activated, I think there's, when you start up a site, I think there's maybe four or five that are activated. And, and we'll, we'll see that tomorrow in, in the lab. Oh, excellent. Yep. Yep. Uh, but as a as a non IEEE WordPress user, the the sky's the limit, right? You got thirty two thousand that you could install and activate if you want to. I would just be careful if you install and activate them that you really want to activate them. As we saw earlier, if they're activated, sometimes they just stay activated even if you deactivate them. And I've seen that with some of the plugins we use for the Region Six site as well. I've tried to disable some of the calendars and. Yeah. Are there plugins like malicious kind of thing? Interesting. You get in, you, you, you think it does something, and then it does something else to you, <laughs> and it grabs all your data, things like that. Are there things like that? that well, typically, if you download it from WordPress, then they, there's a QA process that they put these things through so that they're not going to let you know people do that. Like, well, that's a thing that no plugin can go off and and do something with a third party site. There was a plugin that I was using for something and they were checking, it was a spam thing and they were referencing some third party thing and, and somebody complained about it and the plugin got pulled off of, Word, off of WordPress. Yeah, I don't think it so, would last yeah. long on the WordPress site, but there probably are plugins out there that would do that if yeah. you're careful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they may charge you twenty bucks for it too. Right. You got somebody's reading a blog. Oh, here I get this great plugin. It does this and this. Click here to download it. You know. You oh, no well, these yeah. plugins. Yeah. So all of these are free because they're from IEEE. So the ones on WordPress.com are free, but not all of the plugins that are available are free. So you could go to a non-wordpress.com site, get a plug-in, and it, they might charge you $100. So. Well, as you saw, like the contact thing, the guy wants a donation. So yeah, it's free, but he'd donations. like to have you, you know, like, you like to get a donation. Do any of them share their source, source code? It's all open source. Yeah. So so, so you can yeah. see it, but it, they're going to have to report it. Yeah. When you go, you go, you can go and you can download the, you get a zip file, the thing, an you know, expanded zip file, and, and there's all the code. Right. So, yeah, so you, you can see all the code. So. Yeah. Do the plugins reside on your computer? No, they reside on the database. So they're there again. They're up in this. Well, in well, this no, they're they're actually they're actually physically files. They're not in the database. The, the PH, the code is not in the database. That, that's correct. So yeah. so the plugins. If you're if you're creating your WordPress site, you would download the plugin to your computer, and then install it onto your site. At that point, it, it resides on that site. Yeah. What you don't see here is there's a in the regular WordPress under the plugin thing, you can search for plugins on WordPress, and then you can pick them and you can install them, which means it downloads it and, and puts the code in. So part of what we didn't say about WordPress sites is there's a whole directory structure where all the WordPress code goes in, and the themes go in there, and the plugins go in there, and the, and the media files go in there, and then everything else is in the database. So if you install a theme, like it's the same as if you were to install a plugin. You, you download the theme, install the theme. Yeah. Right. And because this is a hosted WordPress site on IEEE, we don't have access to install plugins or themes. Um, and and we've, I guess Con and, and some of the guys back in IEEE have gone to some extent to make sure that these themes and these plugins work well together. Right. They they have, they have a, they actually have a QA site and they try things out and see because some, sometimes plugins will conflict with other plugins. 
because they're developed by different people and, and they you chose some variable name or some something or other which conflicts with something else, but they weren't using the other thing, so they who knows if it's a conflict. There's like thirty thousand of them, you know. So the other thing is that I haven't mentioned is you can take the IEEE themes and, and whichever one you want, and you can host your IEEE site on a WordPress site, install the IEEE theme, and then you have access to do whatever you want to install other plugins, other themes if you tell, want to. Tell us again, that sounds a great idea. Yeah, so. So um, you, can you show us how that works? Well, I, I can't show you how it works, but I can tell you how it works. So okay, I, I, we recently walked somebody through this. Yeah. Uh, so they, what they wanted was they wanted to have their WordPress site, as, as the rest of the world wants their Word, WordPress, WordPress site, without the restrictions that IEEE puts on it. Yeah. And so they, um, they downloaded, we can, we can provide the IEEE themes, the look and feel that we have for IEEE websites. Yeah. And then um, you can install those themes on your WordPress site. Okay. Right, so, but if you're not an IEEE, unit, they're not going to give you the theme. That's true. Yeah. If you're not an IEEE unit, you're not going to get those themes. But if you are and you wanted to do that, you could do that. And yeah. so I think it's uh, Bonaventure or, or one of the one oh, of the yeah, yeah, California yeah. sites yeah. wanted yeah. to do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but so that would, it, it does a couple things. It gives you more control over your, your IEEE site. You can um, install plugins, as I mentioned, uh, whatever plugins you want to. But then on the other hand, you don't get the benefit of um, having it you know, QA through the IEEE um, organization. My question about the legal thing, if somebody mm -hmm. used IEEE's logo or IEEE things mm -hmm. and create their own website, limit IEEE's site and collect information from members, is that legal? No, it's not legal. And then IEEE would pursue that, I'm sure. I, I took you up this and that. I, I mean, it's like uh, any other unauthorized use of the IEEE game. Yeah. It's like you create a wall, some Walmart site and started taking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had one before. One of the members did that. I shot it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, not good. Yeah. So that that's not legal, right? No, so I wasn't wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll keep going through this. So we're almost to the end of this. Um, role scoper, so CMS-like permissions for reading and editing. So you can uh, restrict content beyond the, the built-in user-level access. Right, right. That's like the uh, uh, the other one. I can't remember what it's called. The, the, the uh, app. One we mentioned earlier, I can't remember the name. Yeah, of the, the, uh, the, the, the user the, groups yeah. or whatever. It was. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. RSS uh, include pages. So here you can um, include pages and not just posts into RSS feeds. Uh, so share and follow, simple way to manage sharing and following for social networking. So this is this is the plugin that um, you would use on. Um, so it would, it's the one that creates this right here. Oh no, down there. It's the one in the post. Oh, is it? oh that's sorry. Right. That's right. It's yeah, and then one down here. Um, simple redirects. I mentioned that one already. This is the plugin that allows you to redirect to another site. Uh, page redirect. Dropbox upload form. So if you use Dropbox, you can use um, the short code into uh, to, to create a Dropbox upload. Uh, smart maintenance mode allows you to, to set your site to maintenance mode so you can see the coming soon page. We so talked about that a little bit. That's another thing you can use rather than have a, just a please log in, you can have a coming soon. Yep. And I think this applies to the whole site, though, again. Yeah. yeah, so that's the site so. to me. Yeah. So it's somebody like, somebody yeah. had been asking about that, but I think I don't think she's here. Yeah. She's yeah. Asking There's the social media icons widget. Um, we're not currently using that. Apparently, don't need it anymore. But you had but you had a share and follow, which probably is a good Yeah, the Spark quiz. If you wanted to uh, allow users to take quizzes like they do on Facebook, you know, are you a Jedi or are you a Sith? Uh, stealth publish. 
So this uh, prevents specific posts. So this is kind of the, this is one of the better ways, I think, to create um, working content or, or work in progress pages. Let's use this stealth publish so you can publish it or not. Um, sub pages, so this is, allows you to, to show sub, sub, sub pages on empty pages. Yeah, and most, thing. yeah, most people don't probably don't know what that is, but use it if you want to. Syndicate, um, so this is a syndication aggregator, so you can get feeds from a bunch of different places, plug them into one. Um, if you have a countdown to something, like we should probably put a countdown to our next conference on there, you can do this. T minus countdown. Table press. I don't use table press. Ta table press lets you upload a CSV file and put a table on your site. So if you have, you know, uh, the committee, the committee names and, and their email and their phone number, you can you can maintain an Excel, save a CSV file, and, and upload it, and it's there, and you don't have to do any styling and things like that. So it's it's useful for stuff like that. Um, or or you can put it in Word and just paste from Word, and there's the table. So it's half and half. Some people like like table press. Uh, you can also have, but what it, if you have a very long table, you can you can display ten entries and have a more button to see the next ten or. You know, so the next one is just an extension of that. Um, the future is now, so this um, allows you to future timestamp posts. So if you've got an event coming out and you want to publish that closer to the event, but you actually want to get the work done, you can uh, earlier you can do that. You, you can do that with a post any any time because when you go in and. I don't know if it's when you're creating the post, but after you publish it, you can go back and, and do a quick edit, and you can set, you can set, you can go and change the time the post is published. Let's say you really you you were supposed to publish this last week and you forgot, you know, so you can go back and, and you can you can change the date when it's published to be you know like last week. Yeah. You know, in, inside it'll you'll, it'll see that it was created that month, but, but but in terms of the listing and the and the, and the list of posts, it it moves its position. Around. The so tiny MCE is kind of outdated. You can it, it creates some um, advanced features within the yeah. WYSIWYG editor, yeah. which WordPress four already includes, I think. So yeah, I don't well, know. it lets you do. Uh, you can specify the font sizes and font families, and, yeah. and, and some other nice things like that that you otherwise you, you don't have any access to. What happens for our Seattle website? We don't. We can't do the four. So yeah. we had the three point something. I couldn't add the size or the font of the the web. So I he put this and it works fine. Yeah, Beautiful. that works. Yeah. 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 Um, so Twitter goodies will uh, show your tweets in the sidebar area. So if you are a, a tweeter rather than a a WordPresser or a Facebooker, or a Facebooker, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, common <laughs> the right term is, you can tweet uh, tweet yeah. nice. Instead of tweets, right? Yep. Yep. Twitter, Twitter Widget Pro, kind of same same deal. Um, yeah, another tag cloud. Yeah, the ultimate <laughs> tag cloud widget. Yeah. So again, we don't we don't really use tag clouds. Um, so you can also use Google libraries. So uh, JavaScript libraries from Google's Ajax libraries. I don't even know what all that means. I really haven't done anything with that. I have a question. Yeah. Um, like our our site, the Seattle section site, is a three point something, and it oh I always see the notice says the uh, WordPress four point zero four point one there. Right. How are we going to get it to a new version? How do I update well, my you site? Well, you Well, your site is not hosted at IEEE, is it? It is. It mm -hmm. is. Oh, okay. Okay. So how are we going to upgrade? Well, IEEE does, does it. MGA will do that. We don't have point. any control over it. Yeah. MGA so I have to get that. cons to do it. Well, he's right. going to do it for everybody. Yeah. Whenever they make, whenever they make the decision to do it. So right now they they're not doing it. It's uh -huh. like taking Ford Motor Company and upgrading from Windows ninety five to Windows NT. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a That's big, why it's, it's just impossible. Thing. Many of the yeah. things you can't do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's possible that some of the some of the plugins we use don't work on Ford, and so that they're you not can, they, they can't do that, do that because there's there's too many things. Yeah. Now I can make yeah. Um, visitor maps. Oh, oh, sorry, I skipped one. User access manager. Yeah, Again, that, this that is 
Yeah, like this that is what you can use to control access to different pages and so forth. That's like that other one you mentioned, they can move the other ones. Yep. The visitor maps will tell you who's, who's been online if you want to. It's kind of fun. If, you're, if you've got people visiting from all over the world, uh, you can show that to all of the people visiting from all over the world. Um, then VTools, Web in a Box, Feeds. So that's kind of, I think that's probably going away. We don't, yeah. Most sites don't even use Web in a well, Box. Like, no, WebBox is still, what Web in a Box has is they have a way, if you're an IEEE unit, is they show you your current officers. And so, the, so if you, so you don't, so if you can use that, you can, you can get the list automatically. So you never, you never have to edit that page every year when things change. It's just automatically updated. So widget, widget logic allows you to um, use widgets on only certain pages. So it's kind of, it's if you only want like the promos for your site showing up on your home page rather than on your products and every other page, you could do, use that. Um, the WordPress business plugin, uh, you could add facts, testimonials. Again, this is kind of a, a more of a business plugin. The bells you guys go to do businesses, you might want to check that out. Yep. The WordPress importer will import pages and posts um, from a WordPress export file. So, so if you're moving your blog from one place to the other, you would export it, and then you could import it into another. The WordPress search engine optimization is the one I showed you. No, no, or no, that that's not it. That's no, it. it doesn't say anything about media. The WordPress importer doesn't oh. say anything about media. So. Yeah. WordPress email, uh, you can recommend and send your pages to other people. RSS import allows you to import RSS feeds. Another, yet another RSS import plugin. Yep. Or another WordPress table. Now, that, that has been um, superseded by table press. Yep. So. The document revisions, obviously we don't have this activated and we have the ability to control revisions, so don't really need that anymore. But WordPress. If, but if you're doing a real content management system for some reason and you want to control revisions of documents, you do. Yeah. Um, email, Google Maps. Yeah, don't really need the Google Maps. Uh, these are all different pieces to that. Um, another mobile formatter. Um, security log audit. So if you have problems uh, with people maybe hacking your site, you can install that and look at that. And then, um, yeah, another related post plugin. So another RSS feed. So that's it for plugins. Um, the last, yeah, no, go ahead. The, um, the, you said the mobile version. Yeah. We, if we put activate, does that mean automatically create one? Or it depends on the plugins. So you saw there are multiple of. No, it, yeah, but there's multiple different mobile versions. There's, there, remember, there was like that one, and there was an iOS one, and then there was another mobile one earlier. So it depends on the plugin that you that you work with as to whether it automatically does it or not. And I don't know how good these are at formatting things for mobile devices either. So did you uh, you mentioned about your iPhones? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But did you have one in this for the iPhone? Yep. Can you show us how that works. Um, well, I we don't use it, but, but it. Um, like I said, I I haven't activated any of these yet because I'm not totally convinced that they yeah. work the way yeah, I expect I them to. <laughs> yeah. So you plug you activate, and then what will happen? Um, well, anybody let's, iPhone look at it, is it automatic a switch to the other one? Let, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the plugin site and see okay. what it does. Right. But if it's automatic, then yes, that is correct. If okay. it's not, you may have to enable that for a page or a post or something along right. those lines. Um, yeah, right now if you go, I'm using Chrome and I go to region six, I just get a, I just get a list of stuff. I don't get... Like the, that map that we have in the home page, the content doesn't oh, show up. I, I, just, I just get, I just, I get, well, it says welcome, and then I get the menu items, and then I get, uh, hmm. and then the, and then a bunch of various posts, things like that. So. I think it's probably better suited to a site like this. This is this, this is supposedly the site that is dealing with this, which um, is interesting because it doesn't actually show me what I'm looking for, but. 
Um, uh, actually, what happens if, it, if it's not compatible, what you do is a teeny weeny weeny version uh, of, of the see. site on your phone. Oh, okay. You know, the sideways. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, because it's all, you know, it's, it's jammed to fit into your. You know. It's a very graphical content oriented site. This is probably a tool that you want to use. Because it's, again, with us, with IEEE, we're providing information, not necessarily graphics. So it may not be as big of a deal for us. We can still zoom in on the site and, and get the information we need. Um, all right, so I wanted to show you the calendar, the Google Calendar. So let's see if I can find that here. So that was it, Popcom. OK. So, um, is this it? Okay, so we've gone over that. All right, so the Google calendars. All right, so you remember the all in one event calendar that I showed you earlier? If you have a Google calendar set up, you can, you, um, you can import the calendar. Uh, you, you can add content on your calendar from um, another feed. So that's one way to do this. So there's your, your meetings here data. So if you have multiple calendars, let's say you have um, a business calendar and a personal calendar, and you want all of that calendar data to show up on your website, this is how you could combine those calendars together and have them show up. So you add the you add the the RSS feeds, so here under other calendars, okay. And then um, you, know, you click on the events, brings up more details. Um, where is it? And then uh, using the the Google Calendar plugin, then you um, would re, you would you'd pull this calendar and you'd plug that into your website and that would bring in all of your calendar data for multiple calendars. Does that make sense? So, so how, you, do I, I, how do on our website, what comment I need to add in to pull two calendars into them? Show, can you show an example of how that works? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to say this. For IEEE sites, which I think is what you're asking for, you wouldn't do it this way anymore. Oh. I don't do it this way anymore. Yeah, so, what you do? so in IEEE sites, you would do what I showed you earlier, which is use the VTools feed, yeah. that that I see iCal or or other feed XML feed, and you plug that into the calendar feed for the all-in-one event calendar. That's the way you want to do it now. Oh. But for people who aren't using IEEE calendars this is how you would do it to combine multiple calendars together. Um, for instance, um, people may, may use WordPress to collaborate. There's, if you set up a WordPress site correctly, um, you, know, you can have tasks created, you can have calendars, multiple calendars combined. You could run a project through a WordPress site if you had to. There's other better tools, I will say that, like Basecamp's a better one to use now. but. Um, yeah, that, that that's a way. That's an idea that you could you could combine multiple calendars and see what everybody's up to, um, and and schedule things. Okay, that's all I've got. Um, do we want to take a, a break? It's three o'clock, and uh, maybe come back in ten minutes. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. So um, this afternoon we were going to go over what you want us to go over. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm, with that, I'm going to throw in a caveat, and that is that um, if I triply, we're pretty much covered in terms of promotion. I mean, we need to get our, our site out there to people to know that it exists, which includes things like putting the site on our business cards and the site on our signatures, our email signatures, and things like that. But, you know, our search engines are already, they've found IEEE.org. Am I on? I'm on now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, I, I want to go over kind of how you get the word out that your site exists, right? Because if nobody knows your site is there, how are you going to do business, especially as a business, which I think most of everybody in here is trying to do, um, you want to make sure that people know it exists. So, um, the first thing I would do 
is go to Google and I would submit that site to Google. So um, as the website owner, you can um, submit that website, add your URL. So what does that do? Well, it puts, it in, it puts that site into Google's um, list of domains to go out and send their um, spider bots out there and search your site and find all the content. Sorry, I missed the very first part of oh. this. You you're actually went to Google to do this. Yes. So where do you go to Google? So on Google, it's um, submit your content. Submit your content. Yep. Okay. Yep. Very important site. Uh, if you think about how many users use Google versus any other search engine, this is the place to start. You know, from here you can go to Yahoo and you can go to Bing and you can go to the other search engines, but Google is by and far the largest search engine um, out there. So make sure that your site is up there. Now this won't happen instantly. Uh, once you submit your site, it does take a little while for the, uh, the Google bot to go out and find your site and to, to index it, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, so start right. there. I think that's what the, some of the SEO plugins do for WordPress. So, cert, yes. So I don't. I don't know if they actually submit your site or not. I think. I think the SEO by Yoast ha, does, does something about indexing, but I. I we'd have well. to look at the documentation and find out if it does that. Okay. So, um, if it does, that's great. If it doesn't, now you know how to do this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the other things are I, um, Matt Blast, um, things like that. If you have a brick and mortar company that happens to have a website, you also want to make sure that your listing on the, the, the map blast and things like that, Google Maps, that those, those link to your website as well. And so you can take control of your brick and mortar pin on Google and add information like your business hours, your, uh, your website, your contact, your phone, phone information, things like that. You want to do that as well. Does that make sense? Okay. So the second one, rich snippets, how that works, how, what, what should we do with that one? Don't know. I never used it. Let's see what it does. Ah. Okay. So this allows you to, to plug in, looks like some... Um, yeah, and that, that, I think that's what like the, the SEO plugins right. will, will take care of that for you. Okay. So that's this, one of their functions. This little, dis oops, I can't do that, but this little description right in here, <laughs> this is the description that you plug into the search engine optimization page in WordPress. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, let me see if I can find one. Yeah, there's some other stuff here too, but so... So what have we got? We've got plug your site into Google, plug your site into the maps, um, yellow, local yellow pages. Uh, believe it or not, people still use things like, like yellowpages.com. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Question, suppose you're not quite brick and mortar, like you have a P.O. box. Yeah. Uh, do, do you still, uh, like if you're intellectual property, but you don't have a physical location? I would still, um, still get on there if you can. Like typically, um, let's see, I think they pull that data from the county or the, the state or the, not the state, the, the business license, right? So if you have a business license, it's going to end up there eventually. It's gonna, that, that business is going to end up attached to whatever address you used on the business license. That's yeah. NASDAQ. Same as the stock thing? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Or you said go to Google, and then you said go to... Go to like MapBlast or MapQuest. Yep. Okay. Plug that Locations. in. So in those, those, those two, those are going to look at the business. Um, so I don't know. Let's, <coughs> let's see what we can find here. So how do we, how do, we do this? I'll try my wife's business here. Good example. All right, so here ah. she's got a she's got a um, a listing here under I don't know what this is. Let's see what is that? That's Google Maps. Okay, makes sense because I'm searching in Google. So if I pull up this, um, you know, she doesn't have her website listed here. But I pull this up, I can see Better Balance Healing. I can also see that it's an old address. So if this was me, if this was my business, I would, um, 
I would edit this business, and how do I do that? Where did I do that? You can take ownership of this listing. So Google Plus page. I've, it's been a while since I've done this. I'm sorry. Um, first to review. Here you can edit the details. Okay, so I can, looks like I might be able to change the mat address. Yep, okay, so, so I can correct the data that Google has in here. Do that, make sure you've got that. I can add a website, that's another critical piece. And then if you wanted to add a note or anything else, but, you know, take control. Anybody can do it, it's kind of dangerous, right? Scary, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's a <laughs> I, think, I, I, I think what they're going to do here is when I submit all this, they're actually, it used to be that they would um, require like a postcard get sent to this address and to activate the information changes that I've just made, they, they, there's a PIN number on that postcard. Yeah. So, so there's some, there is some security here, or there was, I don't, I don't know. This is a different, I will say this is a different interface than when I owned my business and I was doing this type of thing. So, oh. uh, but, but yeah, you can, you can make the changes, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to apply. Mm -hmm. oh. Because yeah. otherwise, you they can send this to somebody else's and people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. the phone number is totally went to a different place of mm. some sort. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, um, but but the point here is that you the takeaway is that you want to anywhere your business shows up on the web, you want to make sure that information is accurate and you want to make sure it's up to date. So just I mean you can you can search in Google. That's that's one place to start, and then um, you know start working the other search engines. Yeah. Yahoo, Bing. Um, I don't know what else people use. Ask.com is that still used? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Alta Vista's gone. <laughs> Did that bought by somebody? I think. Uh, or did you get Yahoo, down? Who bought that? I think Yahoo bought Alta Vista. Anyway. Yeah. That was Dex uh, search engine. Yeah. So, so those are some ways to um, promote your business. Um, you know, pick up a book. There's a good book called uh, Guerrilla Marketing. I think if you're, if you're a, a sole proprietorship or, or small one-person company, uh, you have to take the most advantage you can get out of uh, the cheapest marketing you can get. So these are, these are free ways to get your site going. Um, <coughs> did you want to talk about anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I had a... Um, I didn't hit enter. That's what happened. I was wondering why nothing was going on. Um, you know, switch to your computer. Yeah. Well, I can do that. I was trying to find a so what I discovered. What I I, I said, okay, let's go to a, a site that we have that we're using the SEO plugin and see if we can find out in Google and see what's in Google. What's from what coming from the SEO plugin. Um, guide for practitioner talks. So the other, while well, Ed's looking that up, is there anything um, this afternoon that you'd like us to go over that we haven't talked about already? Especially in as relation to WordPress. I'd be glad to discuss your personal lives, but probably not. I'm not the best. <laughs> Do you mind how about just for the Seattle section? I try very hard to put a photos, like uh, panoramic photos mm -hmm. on our session website heading. And we touched up a little bit of changing it, those stuff. Can you do a little demo so <laughs> we know how to put the photos on, that, like the image on the heading? Can we do that tomorrow as yeah, part of the lab? That's I'd, right. rather, I'd rather yeah. do that as part okay. of the lab. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. It, on the website, it said something about like Excel and I don't know, all yeah, those other the things database. Yeah. yeah, so uploading Excel files and things like yeah, that? or right. oh, yeah. I'm not sure exactly what it was about. I thought you could oh. do stuff with websites. Wait, well, in WordPress, you're not directly going to do anything with a database per se. Okay. Although so, WordPress is using a database, but yeah. you're, you're, it's not a database 
What um, what cool. aspect of Excel are, are you asking about? Did you want to, because you can take an Excel file and you can upload it as media and have a link to that file. You can take the tables and you can copy and paste those into a WordPress page. Or you can use the table press and upload your Excel file and put it on to, put it on to, uh, and it's, there's, it's not like Google Docs, you're not going to be able to go in and, and, and do any editing. Another question along this line is, if when we have people sign in, for example, want to sign in as a members, mm -hmm. and we want to catch that in the database, right? So how does that work? For example, I have this organization right now, I'm saying it's GHTC Hackathon, yep. what we're doing. And we want the interest of people who want to join this, uh, this activity right yep. as a member right yeah. so we have a form if you can show us if we can load the form then they fill in mm -hmm. and how is that going to be captured in terms of on the website so as web owners they can see who has signed up and give them the right of they can put in their mm -hmm. password so next time they can sign in you're asking a lot. So, <laughs> That's a loaded question. I'll yeah, just say so that. Yeah, so those kind of things, so what, what do we need to do? But I'm just yeah. wondering whether they're... Well, I'm wide. Okay. We I'm, I didn't realize so, I was going. Yeah. Okay, so what I did... Come looking at to that. Looking at the SEO issue, so we have this web page on this site about press releases, and we have this PDF here, right? Okay, so that's key. And then down in the SEO entries, so this is the snippet preview. And then there's their focus keywords and, and the SEO title, and it says there's too many characters, but we didn't make that up. The plugin made that up, so I'm not going to worry about it. So now I went over and I Googled GHCC 2015 press release. Okay, so there is, there's the PDF, right? And then it says, so issues call for paper, steering committee announced, right? So if I go back over here, and it says, um, you don't and, right, so if you go, let's go back to the text. So when we go back here to the text, and it says that today the steering committee announced. So Google is pulling stuff out of our page and putting that in the, in the preview. So you can override that by adding the description, <coughs> so changing the meta description in the bottom. Maybe that's it, because there is a, there's a meta description. Keep going uh, down. That's right there. Oh, okay. So that description, if you put something into that, that's what will show up as the snippet under the Google link. Okay. So, so right now it says issues call for papers, right? Which is probably not bad. Yep. But, and then the steering committee. So it's, it basically it took the uh, took the first sentence of the of the content on the page and put yep. that in there as well. That's yeah. what it will do by default. <clears throat> yeah. So I thought this was good because we got something we could actually search that we can relate to a site that we've got <laughs> and, yep. and we can look at it, you know what I mean, and right. see, see what it did. Um, and um, I'm going to erase this. Yeah. So Sheree, let's, let's go back and talk about your, uh, your, your requirements there. So you want to have you want to have the user fill out a form. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to change that. So fill out a form. Yeah. And that form you want to have go onto the uh, WordPress site. Yeah. And, okay. And it's, it's database. you'd like it to go into the WordPress uh, database. Okay. Right. Like to have their name, email addresses, whatever we build in, right? Like yeah. what we did yeah. for anything else. All that. right. Well, we can. We can from uh, that, you want it to um, use the user access management to access a hackathon page, right? right? Yeah. Is that about what we're yeah. asking? Uh, uh, I, I wanted to first, uh, when people uh, upload their form, request to be members, I will be able to send an email back to, like what do we do? They will send an email back of you to, uh, to uh, validate, validate your address and then people okay. can sign in as a password oh, there it is. and next time they can go in to be do whatever on the on the on the page on right. the website right so things. so here here's the it's like a maybe use the management kind of things because right. we need to have people sign up as members right and that happened to 
almost all the organization needs right. to do that. So, so here's, here's a SUSTEC site, and okay. we have all these contact forms. And I turned on the contact form database. Okay. Because so I, for, for, I'm not sure why we're, we turned it on, but we wanted it. We want. So, so I go there and I select a form. Okay. So let's say sign up for the mailing list. And, and it's going to show me that I have 218 entries in the database, right? So I can now I can do a query. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm waiting for the plug. I, I don't know what it's doing here. A script on this page. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know what that did. That did something with it. But anyway, so I got a bunch of headers here, so that you can do you can do you can. Uh, you can do things, and then so what I can do is I can delete all these records. I can remove. I can take columns out of it, or or I can I can export all the data out. Okay. Good. Okay, good. into a spreadsheet. So, so so what what it's done is it's taken. Uh, let's cancel it. So what I've got here is this was a form to sign up. So it was right. the guy's name and his email. Right. And so I got the date of everybody who's signed up. Right. For whenever uh, and then and then these are the some stuff about the captcha so basically up here I can go up and I can say give me get rid of all this captcha stuff so all this uh, is under contact form database. this is the right, contact right, form database right so, so the so the contact form that I showed you so if I'd say I want to look for uh, 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 that was signing for the mailing list we get a lot of activity on the sailing uh, sign for the mailing list. let's say we want to say contact contact us and see um, okay, so we have 92. We have 92 people who 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 had sent email saying they want they want the contest us in some way, and then and here's their message basically over right, here right. was was the message that they sent. So so all of the fields from the form end up in this database. So the problem is that yes, the data goes into the database, but the mm -hmm. only way to get the data out of the database is that interface. Right, because the plug there's a plugin that's putting data into the database, and then yeah. you have another plugin so that pulls the data. So the only way, out. but you can print it out, or you can you can export it, download, it. Yeah, export, you can export, export it, export, export it. it. Yeah. yeah. And is there ways like how can you click to send the email back or? No. No. No, not not from things. this interface. So you no. can export, <laughs> download the data, get those email. <laughs> email uh, addresses from that exported data, maybe plug those into um, some kind of WordPress, well, not WordPress, like uh, yeah, WordPress. Just like, for example, the Word, WordPress site we just sign in, right? And we, we choose, we sign in, then they will send an email to validate to our email address for that. Can that be automated? Yes. So the short answer is no. <laughs> There's, well, there's manual steps the, the, there, there are plugins. Um, yeah. Because usually I but, get respond like within a second. It oh, must be so here, here, here's a uh, here's a query from somebody who wants to do just what you said. Let's see. Okay. Looking for a simple plugin, store, update, manage, and publish contact lists to various pages. Uh, so there's WordPress as a contact manager. That's from seven years ago. So, so so that's some of the issues. You go into this thing and there's an answer to the question that's from seven years ago. Oh, that's like forever. Yeah. That's like Roman times in the internet in the internet, you know. <laughs> it's so so is is that, you know, is any of that current, you know. But. So there's plugins that you can use to do bits and pieces of this. Like you can use the contact form seven to to generate the email that would go back to the to the individual. You can you can do that. Um, and there's you know the contact form seven database that stores the data in the database, and there's a user access man, um, ma manager to control access to the pages, but there's no good link from these to this, right? So what you have to do, and what I'm going to recommend you do, is get the data into the database, have um, have them, boy, and this is kind of tricky. Um, because you're, you're talking about people's usernames and passwords, right? So you don't want, anything that goes in this database is going to be just clear text, right? So you don't really want them to enter a real username and password 
one that they would use on a normal basis. I wouldn't. I just, you could do that, but I wouldn't do that. Um, but have them create a username and password to access your site. And then you could upload that information into User Access Manager. So where do I get the user access? That's another plugin. That's another we plugin. Have, we have, have that. We, yeah, we have that available. And I, and I okay. totally do. Yeah. Um, Can we take a look on that one to see how that works? Well, that, that lets you, if you have an account in the system, when you log in, it lets you access different stuff, but that's all. It's just an access. It's a, a, it gives you access, restricts access to content. There, there's, there's one that we have, though, that restricts access to pages. I can't remember what it's called. Maybe it's not user access. I yeah, thought it was user access know. managed. There's one that we have that restricts access to pages within the site, and that's what you'd use in this case to restrict access to the hacker, path, the, uh, hacker pages. Hackathon pages. Um, the validation aspect is again going to be manual. You can automate, I think you can automate the contact form to the automatic reply. So you, they would enter their data and they'd get an e yeah, they would get an email back. You could do that. Mm. Um, and you could have a validation thing in that that says, you know, Maybe click this, and it would uh, again create another form that would automatically email you to know that they validated that address. But again, that doesn't go into the database, and so you'd have to somehow sort between the emails that you're getting, the automatic responses there, and the data that you have in the database to confirm that you have a valid user, and then create the, the user access. So, is there a way like we can send out emails through the database directly? No. What you saw was what you got on the database. You have export, you have view. Ah. That's it. Here we are, contact form to email. Yeah. Oh, but no, but it sends, it sends an email to an address, it sends what somebody submits to an email address in your database. So, yep. yeah, you, you're not going to get WordPress to become a list, a list serve. No. There, there, are plug, there are plugins that will, will take stuff and send it to an external application. They'll do the list serve stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Question. So yeah. How does the list server work? So you, we have to send our emails to New Jersey for them to send it out to our. our no, no, no. That you. What Cherie has, was talking about. There's a there's a, a, a software called Listserv, and IEEE has installed it. And once you set up a list, you just send an email out to an address, and the address goes to the Listserv, and it looks at all of the people who are on your list and sends sends the email immediately out. Well, immediately within. Can I? Um, reply to well, the if you're, and you're, if you're, people. if you, if you don't configure it right, you can anybody can send to the list. So people who reply to the list, and then you get this issue where, if because I don't think the list was set up as a newsletter type list. It was set up as anybody could send anything. So somebody replies, why am I getting this? And he replies to all, and then they want, and then stop sending me this stuff. Stop sending me this stuff. You know, and you get in this war. Huh? Um, if you see some other. Emails that you do get, it said you try to reply to it, it says no reply. Does that go back to somebody or to bounce no, back? No, it you? probably just goes nowhere. There's probably no, it's coming from a non existent email address. What, what happens is this they, um, they have a, on the owner's side, they have settings. Yeah. And so there are some kind of this sort of, they want people to, these like a small discussion groups. Right. 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 So, like for it, you want people to reply, oh, but in some of them, like, a, uh, big news newsletter kind yeah. of things it need to set up like all the reply to the owner. Yeah, and so that that's the situations which we need any uh, which that would be to set up yeah. right. Uh, not that time it was a choice. I did uh, looking at that I choice. So the point is that's is why some people we have the. Take a free ride. So is, so is there any model. any time that you actually just send it to the listener? Oh. What? Is there any time you can just um, take up um, an email yeah, and send, send it to, to the listserv if you are the owner? Okay. And or they... if the, it's set up, of, it's like set up like a forum, like people can reply to all. Because I, I talked to Max and he said all his emails are, come from corporate. Well, you know, the one, the second one you sent, that was clean. Uh, that's yeah. the that e notice. Nice. That's the e notice. Right. It's so, not blast. Right? E blast. No, that's an e-notice. So that's a different type. That's okay. a come from the headquarters. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. All right, so. So this, right. Is, this is listserv. Yeah. And so you've you got all these different lists. These are all the ones that I've been, over years, have been Oregon Section and GHTC and then now Technology Council and Region 6 and all that. So let's say we have, so this is like the program committee. It should select it. Why didn't I select it? it? All right, let's try that. Why didn't do this? Program committee. Okay. There, that's a little slow. All right, so let me go to the wizard. Uh, let's, uh, this wizard, there's the wizard. Yeah, you can. You have to be, you have to be um, hmm. permitted by the headquarters. Then you can probably yeah, just... Yeah, well, you, you send in a request. You, if I to believe you send in a request, and you have to have a staff contact and who you are and all that, and they'll set up a listserv for you. So the student branch is going to have so a listserv. So you can just, like, import an yeah. Excel file yeah. into that? Pardon? You can just import the Excel, the thing which you had exported. Oh, no, you, you can, you, you, well, you can do that. What you, well, you know, let me go here, and then... So what you have is you have... These are all of the parameters, but so you have access control. I don't think I clicked on okay, let's try that again. So you have access control, so you can have attachments or no attachments, and and, and uh, you can say the send session. So who, who can send to this without without uh, getting uh, um, asked for uh, authorization? Because what it do is send. What will happen is you send something to it, and whoever owns the list will get a message. A message has been submitted. Click here to approve the message, kind of a deal. Um, and then, so then you with it, all these different configurations. I'm, somewhere in here is the, is the um, maybe it's security. I don't think it's under security. You can, uh, it says whether, the, what kind of list, list, you have, that's what I get for trying to check this out in real time. I may, it, may be, it may be back under access control. There's a thing where you can make any newsletter type, uh, a newsletter uh, type. Uh, so you can see why this was so easy yeah, to set up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, the, anyway, but you can do, let's go down to subscription. So maybe it's under subscriptions. No, that's not. All right. Anyway, maybe so. I don't. I don't know. I'd have to look through the whole th to find the right property. It's. It's. So ba basically, let's go here to subscribers management. That's the easiest thing to do. We'll do look for subscriber management. So what you can do is you can look at everybody who's in in the list. This is the program committee. So there's like you know 20, 19 people. All right. So so you can set your list up. Oops, I hit the wrong. Uh, go back to the commands here, and then you can you can you can find somebody. So what you can do is you can do single subscriber, or you can do a bulk what they call bulk operation. So if you have a text file like a you know with the tab in it or something like that, name and the, there's a format that you need to use, which is if I go back here. The format is basically email space name. So you okay. can just copy paste all those rows from the Excel file. Um, yeah. 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 And import yeah. it. Yeah, right. Or you just export it, you just take a text an Excel file and export it as text. You know, put put the yeah. email put the email first. Yeah, and putting the text. Yeah, and just put the email first and then there's the names or or you only need the, and then you can add you can replace the list and add the new file. You can, you know, and you just upload the file and and then there's the list. And now, and now you can send, send. Now, what what eNotice does for you IEEE people, I I found out the other day. John Prosky told me is, is eNotice actually uses listserv, mm. but it uses uses this, they have the staff has has them set up. So that's why it's manual because they get the list and they upload upload the new list in and they send the thing out. So it takes them to get have to get the names. They have to upload it and it and it takes them a while to do that. It's not an automatic. An auto, it's not an automated thing. 
So this is this is the other kind of thing that's available. There's there's some free services around. I think that that you can do lists. Yeah, you can. If do you have lists. under 200 people and you yeah. only send under under two messages a month or something, or other, you can get you know you can get free lists. So from a client someplace. client building perspective, if you have clients and you want to send something like this out, there's online services that'll do that as well. It's a pretty expensive though. You can even it, you'll send two yeah. notices a month. Like we have 4,000 members. Yeah. Well, I send it out, and every month they charge us two hundred sixty dollars. Right. Yeah. And if we sometimes we right. send one, well, so we just don't use it. Well, anymore. well, you should yeah. use the IEEE. Because this one yeah. is free. Right. 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 Now, some people have contact managers, mm -hmm. and those those are designed so you can send email out from the contact managers. If you copy paste the whole row with all the email addresses, though, it just copies it as text, and you can paste it as the same. Well, well, this doesn't have paste. This is this is well, old. This is written years ago. So no, I mean, you, but if you actually if you did want file. to send an email to all those people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just paste it into your email thing from the from yeah. the thing and do it manually. Yeah, yeah, as long as you if as long as you don't have. Five thousand, yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, some it, yeah. It, some ISPs will restrict that as well. Yeah, like so you, you only send fifty at a time yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's another con? I think Constant Contact is another good uh, company to That's work so with. Yeah. It's expensive, yeah, but it's it's a nice one from a marketing perspective. They depend on how many contact you have on their on their database. Yep. So yep. Right. They charge by numbers. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? Anything we, that you'd like us to cover? Oh, what was it called? Email? Yeah. I have a question. First time I went to the page, um, it asked me to enter a, uh, a URL, I guess, a name for a website, and I had it dot WordPress. Um, dot com. Uh, does that mean that I could actually enter a different, a non-WordPress, and it would actually uh, uh, get started with this setup for my? Yeah. If you like, um, let's say you had company1.com and you owned that name, right. you could enter company1.wordpress.com and it would create a company1.wordpress.com site for you. Oh, I would still need the word wordpress.com. What about the scenario where I want to use the tool, but not, yeah. not the, the oh, So, so you use have the in the beginning, right. uh, you have this like a company one dot wordpress dot com. Underneath, then they say you can buy the registration fee, like $18, $25. Right. If you click on this, then they go to register for the worldwide um, web. See. And so that will be without WordPress. Right. So if you, but that one will take a little while to get it because it take can be a few days. Right. So you That's just first post, work right. on the, your WordPress.com and later transfer to that. Right. Yeah. What if I already have a website? Yeah. I already, you know, I got one from GoDaddy.com, but I want to use a tool. How how do I go about that? Could I would back up your website. It's the first thing I do. And then um, transfer, you enter it like she's saying. So enter the, the site.wordpress.com and then pick the, I'm going to buy the site.com. And then it, it would transfer that domain over to WordPress. At that point, though, it doesn't transfer the content. So at that point, you're going to have to build that content back up from the, ba the, the, the backup that you created. Mm. So that's where the static to WordPress concept kind of breaks down. However, if you let's if you view the backup in like an Internet Explorer, you copy all of that content and paste it into your WordPress site. It does a pretty good job of taking that and just plugging it yeah, in. Yeah, I've I've done that. I had an HTML site and I was doing WordPress. So I would just go into the browser, Control A, the page, and paste it in, and it and worked. Even, it worked even takes well. the media like the image files, and it does a pretty good job. Yeah. How to do that? So you you take the site like uh, you'd go to you'd go to your backup file and you find it index.html. You just double click on it, bring it up in your right. web browser on your computer, and you just um, in the page hit Control A. That selects everything. Hit Control C, right. copies it, and then you go into your WordPress page that you're creating and hit Control V, and it will paste it in there. All right. Or you just go you know so you come in here and HTML you do. Code it's all you do like control at, at that so point, control doesn't it work, doesn't but. it doesn't think in terms of HTML. It thinks in terms of um, no. I think it's um, 
uh, what's the what's the Microsoft like, term for it? Oh, rich text. Rich or text, yeah, rich text and uh, meta. Yeah. Is it meta? What's what's the graphical term uh, for that? There's I... meta files or something like that. Yeah. And it, it takes it and it just pastes that. Yeah. Translates it into yeah. what WordPress needs. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about pasting the actual yeah. page, not yeah. right. not the source code. But That's the page. correct. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can also do things like like this. I was trying to. Yeah. You'd view the you'd view the rendered copy the rendered page yeah. right. into WordPress. Right. Or you just go on a website like this, you know, copy this thing, paste it in, you know, go into the editor, paste it in, and it'll come in pretty pretty good. You might have to adjust some of the spacing, paragraph spacing, and yeah, stuff like that. But it, but but yeah. but you can just paste stuff in pretty much, and maybe do a little clean up, and and that that'll you know that'll work. Yep. You know, we could even go. I could even go here and. Uh, but pack it up that. before yeah. you start. Yeah. <laughs> so we can make a new make a new post. Yeah. yeah. If we see a site that we like, how do we figure out Let's how see. they did it? Is there some way that we can reverse engineer it or something? Uh, <laughs> so Ed is the master reverse engineer, Boom. I think. Okay. So so here here is, see here's that page I just cut and pasted it right. The only thing is now this this this. Um, this image is probably, it's got a link, so I'd have to, if I went into the text mode and went down here somewhere. Where's so the image? It. Did I pass it? Yeah, no, that, that was, no, that was the, that was the top. Those are the little bit logos. Okay, so where is the uh, image? Image, 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 image. I say, I think it's up at the top. Oh, there's the image. So the image, the image just still has the URL of where it came from. Okay. In this case, it's I'm just made a post on the same site. But so the image, the image will, it'll, will, it's on, it's on the internet. So it's from some place on the internet. So it'll just copy the link over. So if you, you'd have to like save the image and, and import it into your blog, you know, into your WordPress site as media if you wanted to make it really be there. Because when you delete the original, it'll be gone. So it's really easy. It's really easy to uh, to do that. And then notice that it's given me a number for the post because I didn't put a title in before I pasted some content in. So now, so so I have to I'd have to go in here, and I would need to change this to something that made sense, like you know, uh, announcing sus tag. It doesn't like spaces. Come on. Most URLs don't like spaces. Yeah, and then boom. Okay, so now now that's the I, you know it's got a real title. If I if I put if I I'll scroll up, if I put in here announcing SusTech and then pasted it in, then I wouldn't have one two three four or whatever it was there. I'd have I'd have the text in there. So they just sort of reinforce that comment that I made earlier. So I'm I'm not I'm not saving this thing. So I'll just go back and look at the site. Leave the page. Boom. How do you delete that post that you created? I didn't save it. So I, I may go back and there may be some draft on it. Uh, that's a good question. So let's see what happens if I did that. Let's go back to the dashboard. No, if you, if you don't do anything, it doesn't do anything. Uh, that's it's right. That's what, yeah, I'm just, but I'm just double checking. We'll just we'll verify it. Yeah. So there should not be any. Oh, see, there's no title, but it's saved as a draft. So it did save it as a draft. And so what I would do then is I would trash this. Did it ask you if you wanted to navigate away from that page? Yeah, and okay. I said yes. And said yes. yes. Oh, so, yeah, I think when I, I think when I changed the URL, it might have might have, oh, might, have might have saved it. That's right. Yep. So I would just trash that's trash true. this thing. And eventually, poof! So it's been put in the trash. Any other questions? Um, we talk about the registration uh, contact form BB. Right? Mm -hmm. For example, if I have an event like this, instead of sign up to event, right? If it's something free. 
Can I just have a contact form DB so people just put it in? Yes. And I can see how many people signed up right on our website. Yes. And yeah, I can just from there send an email out to. Okay. Yeah. You have to export the data out of the out of the database for that in form. Order to do that. Yep. Yeah. Then yeah. you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was saved a lot of troubles to reestablish. Things. Absolutely, yeah, that, yeah. It, it helps. And mm -hmm. you don't have to set up the v, v tools, uh, you can do that as well. Yeah. But, right. but it's a little more complicated. Much more, this will mm. be much easier. Yes. I, have a, I have a question. This is a logistical question. If we were going to play a YouTube video tomorrow. I don't know how to get the audio. I don't know, is this, yeah. is this audio? Yeah, yeah try it. No, no, but it's audio into that thing. He knows. Ah. Just try playing it. Just try playing it? All right. See, I know the Beyonce video. Because it's not, it's, it's I, well, I don't know if I have my speakers on this thing, so let me just see what happens. Minutes using the famous five-minute WordPress install. With Ooh, the growing popularity right. of WordPress, many hosting services offer a one-click WordPress installation service through cPanel. So if you want to know more there. about hosting and one-click installation, watch our tutorial series on hosting and building a WordPress site. Or check with your host to see if they have a WordPress script available. Now let's dive in and get WordPress up and running on your site. We will start by running through a quick list of what information and applications you will need to have ready for your five-minute install. First, you will need to have access to your control panel or cPanel and the public HTML folder on your server. I will be using an FTP and cloud storage browser called Cyberduck, but you can also use other popular applications like FileZilla or even just File Manager in your cPanel. We will be using this information to access your public HTML folder. This folder is what your server uses to display your content publicly, so this is where we will be installing WordPress. We will also be using MySQL in cPanel to create a database for your new WordPress install. Second, you will need the most current version of WordPress. You can get a copy of this by simply going to WordPress.org and clicking Download WordPress. This will take you to the most current version of WordPress available. Click the Download button and make sure you know where the file is saving to on your computer. Unzip the package and move the WordPress folder to your desktop. Now we are ready for our install. Log on to your cPanel, scroll to and open MySQL so we can create a database for our new WordPress install. The database is what will, what will contain all of your posts, pages, and comments that will be fed dynamically to your site. Give your database a name. I will call mine WD Press and click Create Database. Once you see the screen letting you know your database was created, click Back. Now, you need to create the user that will be accessing your new database. Scroll to where it says add new user on the same page. You can make this what you want, but I'm going to use WD Press again. And then I'm going to generate an extreme password for excellent security. This is not the password you will be using to log into your WordPress account. This is the password WordPress will be using to communicate with your database. So make sure this is secure, then click the Create User button. Copy the password from this page so you can grant WordPress access to this database in one of the following steps. Then click Go Back. Finally, scroll to the Add User to Database section and select your new user and database and then click Add. Check the All Privileges box and save your changes. Then you should get this final message letting you know your user has been added to your database. We are now ready to install WordPress. Navigate to the public HTML folder from your FTP browser or the file manager in cPanel. I'm installing WordPress to my primary domain, but if you are using an add-on or a subdomain, you will need to locate the directory folder for that domain. This is the Cyberduck interface and I've navigated to public HTML. Now upload the files from the WordPress folder on your desktop into the public HTML directory. Once these files have loaded, open a new tab and type in your domain name. A page should appear letting you know that WordPress needs a wp-config file to run. Click the Create a Configuration File button and you will be taken to a WordPress greeting giving you a quick explanation of what is needed to configure WordPress to point to your database. Click Let's Go at the bottom of the page. On this page, enter the database name, 
where it says WordPress, remember to enter the section provided before the underscore. Then enter the username you created. Be sure and include the full username. Again, including the part that came before the underscore. Enter your epic password and then click Submit. When you see this screen, you are ready to run the install. From here, you can give your website a name, enter a username. By default, this displays as admin. To help with security, make sure and change this to something else. Enter and re-enter a secure password, your email address, and decide if you want search engines like Google to make your site discoverable right away. You may want to uncheck this and initiate indexing in your WordPress dashboard after you build your site. Then click Install WordPress. When you receive the success message, WordPress has completed. You can type your website name into the browser and you should see the default WordPress theme. Congratulations! You have now completed the famous 5-minute WordPress install and WordPress should be now up and ready for you to customize. For more tutorials and information on WordPress, multi-site, and BuddyPress, be sure and visit WPMUDev.org. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access more great tutorials. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's if you're doing a simple site, just one blog, not a multi-site thing, which probably you guys won't need to do. One, one little thing is the database password information is all stored in a WP config file, which is on your, oh. on your Hello. thing. Is this? Oh, this is going I'm to keep playing. I'm reading a book on how to make a website. But really, who wants to read them? Right. And this guy is going to go on for an hour, so I don't think we want to have this guy go on for an hour. <laughs> so this is how to make an. So this is after you've done the install. You can listen to this for an hour. How to make an amazing website. So there's lots of videos on on YouTube. So here's make a business website, a beautiful website, how to create a logo. How to make a blog. Yeah. So there's there's just, you know, lots of stuff. Although mm -hmm. some some of these videos, as you know, the guy goes, oh, so yeah. Oh, it's done. Click here. It's done. Click here. It's done. And, and, you know, and, and so in five minutes you go through and you see the thing, but it may not take you five minutes of clock time to do that because you, you know, but, but uh, the, he's got the basic steps that you need to do there. And uh, that, that's produced by one of the, you know, WPMU dev who are very associated with the WordPress people. You know what I mean? So. Anyway. so People were asking about the um, plugins on the WordPress.com, and so here's what I found if you haven't looked that up. What they say is that um, they have installed the most popular plugin functionality. Oh, good. Okay. So that's why there's no plugins tab on the dashboard. Yeah. So these are all the plugins that they have um, installed. Right. And, then, and then they've also figured out that these all work together and that there's no weird interactions and permutations and combinations. Because I think if they had people doing that, they well, I've got this. I installed this theme, and I got this plugin, and and it's some permutation that they didn't, you know. So now they they know that they're not they're not going to have any support problems, you know. When they got millions of users, they don't they don't want to have any any support issues. So you can also request a plugin um, if you would like to. But until they get with what is it, 90 million users, until they get probably at least one million requests, they're probably not going to install the plugin. <laughs> yeah. But they do yeah. have they do have yeah. some good. Oh, and ones it says there. if you have a if you pay for enterprise. Let's see, there's a list of yeah. optional. So some optional plugins. Yeah, so you can so click and see what that is. See what here's. So here's the enterprise version. Mm. Community plugins. Oh, the Google Analytics. They do some other yeah. stuff. So oh, and, and some development. Yeah, maintenance. There's a few mode. more here. Yeah. So these are like the additional plugins which IEEE sites would have access to. No, these are WordPress.com. WordPress if you pay the money, other than they're free, you get you get to have some extra things that you yeah, can use. I think it's uh, let's see, is it? Uh, oh, no, it's not I have it, I have it up here. I have my you know, my WordPress.com site if you want it. Oh. 
a free website is just a blogging website. It, if, yeah. if, if you're hosting, <laughs> you can put links on it. Yeah. If you're hosting WordPress like on your own or like not using the WordPress.com, that there can you install plugins? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have yes. to. You have to because WordPress doesn't come with oh, anything. So, so then you can put whatever. It, you it comes want. with 20, yeah. 2014 or whatever, and and that's about it. You know. But then you don't have to pay. But then you can put whatever you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You right. Have to you just pay have your ISP. Right. You just have to WordPress right. installation. Right. You have to pick which of the three thousand <laughs> themes and the thirty thousand plugin combinations that you want. That's all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. I may have missed that part. If I'm an IEEE member but not part of the organization per se, do I have access to all websites? Is that what you're saying? That, or? that is interesting. I um, I don't know. I actually. don't think we have we individual have. blogs. We have organizational blogs. Do, yeah. do we have anything through Google though? Because now we've we've got those Google uh, accounts. I don't know. I know we have Google Google Docs or Google yeah. whatever, whatever whatever that new thing is. Google Drive, whatever whatever they call it now. And I don't know if there's blogs on that or not. I really don't know. How sure. do I find out about that? Uh, let me go find. Let me go check here. I'm logged into my Google. You thing. tell Ed when he goes and finds it. Let me see. <laughs> which is which is this? Oh, that's Google Plus. Hey Lance. Yes, sir. Get the uh, IEEE themes. The IEEE themes. So um, you would send an email to Con. Or I can I can so interfere. So we buy we mm -hmm. buy a site and then we send it to Khan. He'll send us the feed. Oh, That's interesting. Right. I have no idea what this means. I went to sites and it showed so me something, but it says there's no sites. So, doing, so I don't know I don't know what this means. I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't know a lot about Google. The, the, you already have a theme. So I went I went to Google sites you know, you, you have the and it you tells me there's no sites. On oh, but the site's in IEEE. Okay. The so place. I think the answer is on Google, well, we can't do it either with IEEE. Because yeah, I, yeah. I went to the site. That was, yeah, that was default. Okay. Well, that's my <laughs> but, own um, search. Well, you, other you, you can get a personal email address, lots of posting of facts. Well, right, and you get, and you get, uh, uh, there, it does look like we do have, so hold on a second. Did you, you see I don't think you can make a website. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's that's not access. Um, I I I kind of doubt it, but we'll we'll dig into it. Right. Because see, you yeah. get you get Google Drive. You get Google Drive. You get Google Docs. I don't know what Sheets are. You get uh, Calendar, and you get Google Plus. Yeah, it doesn't look right. like it. And. Uh, I think you can do. I think you can also do Hangouts. I have never figured out yeah. how to do Hangouts. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it's relatively simple once you've done it the first time. But if, you know, it's like installing WordPress. Once you <laughs> once you figure, <laughs> once it, you out, figure it out, it's not. Nice. It's it's not not that. Do you know any good contractors for e-commerce? I just felt like I don't think I can hack this kind of thing. I probably have to hire people. There are people who will create WordPress sites for you, right? Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, 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 the good contractors you know of. Yeah, I know. I know a guy in Portland, but you probably you probably want somebody in Seattle. You know, what I mean, I know a guy in Portland who does it, but I don't know if he does e-commerce or not. But I know he does. He does stuff with uh, with uh, WordPress. I don't mind working people on a distance. I mean, I, I don't have to see their face, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is Google Plus. So, but I don't. I don't. I don't see anything else in there. Yeah. I don't have a good I don't have a good reference oh. for you, unfortunately. I, I would go to Elance. Can you spell that out for me, Elan? Mm -hmm. E L A N C E. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty easy to use. Um, I've done I've done some work as a contractor through there. Uh, I haven't, I don't think, I, I've never hired anybody through there, but I would imagine it's probably as simple as doing a contractor. They take a little bit off the top, um, you know, for for the price, that the, the fee for for that goes through, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. And you can find, they, all of, all of the jobs, it's kind of like eBay, you get reviews on jobs that you work on and probably as a contractor or as a employer you probably get reviews too I think I, I reviewed my employer yeah. a question hmm. yeah so what do you think about wix.com 
Well, that's that's the site that my wife used. So, is that about the same as WordPress? I would say it's very comparable. Okay. Yeah. And it, you probably have to pay money to. No, I believe that's a free site. It's a free site. Yeah. Free site. And it's honestly much easier to use than WordPress. So why do we Fair use enough. WordPress? <laughs> Sorry. Why are we word using WordPress? WordPress was the first. I think it's got some great plugins. Wix doesn't have all the functionalities. I see. It's a more basic site. Yeah. 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 I used it to build my online portfolio, so for that it works. Yeah. But I know when my wife was interested in setting something up, she asked other business owners what they used, and that that's the one that came up. And it, it's mostly, I think, because it's, it's free. It's a recent yeah. um, site builder. I think earlier there was Weebly, mm -hmm. and then before that there was Foursquare. Mm -hmm. But Wix is now the current flavor of the season. Do they put advertising on the sidebars? No. One, one of the things you are asking question about building a business website, you can go to like web.com. Let uh, have, they have they can even build a website for you free, but you have to use them to host your website. And they do uh, build all those business things in like taking credit cards or something. Web.com. Yeah, try it and see. And you just call them up and ask them what they can do for you. And they will take you what you need and they will just build a website for you that way. That's, that's great. So how about Site Google? Uh, I used to use that a few, a few cases. Are they comparable? I've never used Sites. No, Google. No, never tried it. I don't know. Ed, do you know anything about Sites Google? I don't know about it. Okay. Yeah, haven't mm -hmm. used it. Let's, let's look at that. Google sites. Sites.google. Probably. Any other questions? Is there anything that you wanted to hear out of this today that you haven't heard? Yeah. 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 I remember when there something was it said like shopping cart linked with Excel or accounting database and stuff. Okay. That, that's a plugin that's RRI, am I right, Triple E? Maybe, I don't know. It, it, it was just like in the content for the workshop, like in the description. Oh, shopping cart in uh, oh, the shopping cart. Amazon or something. Gotcha. Like that. that was, um, so the shopping cart plugin is really what you'd want to use there. And that's the, the PayPal and Amazon plugins that I mentioned. Oops. Yep. Yep. So I typed in shopping cart and it comes up with a pizza. Pizza? Yeah, I don't know why. Right. Let me try a shopping space cart. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a different results. Yeah. Ah. Pay PayPal shopping cart. Yeah. WordPress shopping cart. So, so cart we, press. So tomorrow we would have to buy the site tomorrow morning. No. That's so otherwise it wouldn't be worth coming. <coughs> we have. You can do that. We also have um, several sites that we've set up as IEEE sites that you yeah. can play around with, um, yeah. and we only have a few. Um, but we have like five. Five. I we think. have five so sites, so we might have to do teams or yeah. something like that, and, and look at stuff. But at least in there, you can install, you can activate plugins. You can't install, you can activate plugins. You can, you know, do some other stuff that you wouldn't be able to do on on WordPress the site itself. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know if it's possible to set up a, a web API with WordPress? I <coughs> have a, a device or another computer. Get data back from. Uh, good question. So that's a good question. Um, probably your RSS feeds, maybe are, are probably the best thing. But I mean, there has to be there has to be something. I I don't know for sure. Well, they have they have a plugin for Google to Google uh, for fonts, they, uh, but they don't. Uh, I there, think, there's uh, invoices and billing, but. Uh, I would look in the developer section on the on the WordPress.org yeah. site and see if there's yeah. uh, something there. Yeah, there's a thing called WooCommerce, which is a, a thing that they have that does uh, does pay. I think Woo, I don't, I'm sure what WooCommerce is. It's some kind of. It might be associated with uh, WordPress. I don't know. Can you say a bit about that JSON API user? Right. Uh, which JSON, one? The circle one. Go down that, that, right that there. One, yeah. Uh, what's RESTful? User registration, authentication, and many other user data. You know what RESTful is? No. I don't know what RESTful is. 
I think it's some kind of uh, new web-based thing. I'm not sure. I've, I've heard the I've heard the I've heard the buzzword, but I don't. I don't. Yeah, WordPress is not really a real-time system, so you're not going to, you wouldn't really have it running and, and pulling data in like that. I don't think, because it's... I don't know. I don't know. Because it's a content it's, manager. When you go to the thing, it renders stuff, you know, so there's nothing, it's only, it's only something that's only going on when, when somebody's actively... Yeah, but from an, an API perspective, they might have something that you could run in a piece yeah. of software and pull data from it. Yeah, let's find out. Where's the codex? There may, there, yeah, there may be some. I don't know. Where is the codex? I have a search. Any other questions? Not yep. related, but um, there's a place that you drop papers in. Yeah. New system. Can you talk about that for a little bit? You're talking about the IEEE stuff? Yeah, like the GHTC, uh, Robin, and that's, again, that's, that's, a, that's an Ed question. I haven't been involved with that. Can you say a little bit about EDAS, how that works? What? what? The, the paper, papers. Submission. So if, if you were a company, a business, yeah. um, if, if you wanted to pull abstracts from people, would this be like a, a drop box or something? What would that be like? Uh, good question. Well, you'd have to use one of those uh, upload upload functions to let people upload things. Is that what Robin's doing now? Well, you can, you can create a contact form. You can let somebody make an attachment to the contact form so they can mail you. Okay, so there's a form so, that can so go you can, Yeah, you, you, can, you can go in. Let's go, uh, where's DHCC? PDF or mm -hmm. Word. Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, let's. Um, yeah, let's look at GHTC. Uh, the contact form just sends it to whatever email address it's provided. Yeah, yeah. But we have here a. From the last year's one. Let's see, where is this? A, <laughs> I haven't been involved with GHTC, so I'm not yeah, sure. Let's look at this one here, which is the. Uh, I'm just saying in general. It could be another conference. What do you guys use? Well, we use we usually use a paper management system that's designed to do that. No, this one doesn't have attachments. Yeah, we're we're using EDAS. The latest papers I submitted have been by email. Yeah, we're we're we're, sure. we're using EDAS. Uh, let's see. What does EDAS do? <laughs> Yeah, so it, do you have to install the plugin or widget? No, no, it, it's it's a standalone app. It's a standalone web web thing. Let's see, what do we want to do? Conference organizers to manage the papers. The, we I'm have sorry. we have a, a contact form that does uh, upload does. stuff. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Submit papers and organizers. Yeah. So, yeah. this is a contact okay. form. <laughs> sorry, what was the question again? EDAS has been used in academia for many, many years yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It handles reviews and the whole. It's, it's a very part. It's a very. It's if you try to do something simple, EDAS is sort of all we kill. Yeah. This is a contact form that has a file. That has a file attachment. So, this is this we were asking people about. Tell them, uh, do they have a story that they wanted to sell to send in so that they can they can type it in they can have a photo and so down here there's a uh, a, a code that we got from the generating a tag up here so you pick on something you know like you wanted uh, file uploads at the file where's file a oh, file upload okay and it says here you put this put this in the um, in the form so yeah so there's the file please attach your file and then you go down to the email and in the email you put the name of the attachment okay which is file file so then that and has scroll, it scroll yeah back up for a second so just 
real quick, don't miss this part right here. So there's two different things that you have to put in there. This is also yeah, um, important good. on the CAPTCHA codes. So if you notice, there's a CAPTCHA and a CAPTCHA. So there's uh, just, just make sure you follow the instructions for whatever you generate on that contact forms. Right. Right. Because we could go down. So if you look at, look at the uh, CAPTCHA. So there's two different kinds. So you can pick which one you want. So if you have a couple of them active, uh, so I think we were using that one. So that one has the, uh, yeah. So, the, so this one, first one is the image. So it's going to display a, you know, something you're supposed to type in, text. And then the other one's the input field. So one yeah. which is this one to plug in? I'm sorry, what? Is there a wedge for this one, or it's a Form 7? That's contact, contact Form, form 7. 7. Contact form, form 7, 7 right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, Contact Form 7. I, one of the things I was Googling around, that's the most popular plugin, and it's like got over like 19 million people downloaded it. So so if the guy got five bucks from everybody, he'd be in good shape. He'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't get anything. That's why it's so popular. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. right. <coughs> Actually, I think somebody else is taking over maintenance of it or taking over maintenance of one of these things. So. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you asked. Um, yeah. It's separate. It has so many conferences for IEEE. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, yeah. So it's totally independent of this uh, yeah. website. Yeah, and then what you probably might want to do is, is change this line too. This, said, this was sent from a contact form on your website name here, and you might want to, you might want to, well, usually you can figure out what the subject is, that, what it's, what it's for, but if you wanted to, but if you wanted to say, you know, it was, it was, you know, contact form, contact form 4256 or something, whether if you wanted to somehow be able to, if you had a big long list, and the names all look the same, you, so you need, you need to have some, n n Mono mnemonic aspects to the form name, right? Because if you're trying to figure out, and then the other thing is you stick these all over your site and then you don't really know where are these all used on the site? Well, I don't really know because you could, you know, you can sprinkle them around. So, so um, it might, it might be useful. Oh, there's another, um, another thing that we learned, especially with the GHTC is We've got, I don't know, like 200 pages on this, con on this thing now. And we had, when we initially started out, people would make posts for announcements. Not posts, pages for announcements. Announcing the contest is now open, and they make a page. Mm -hmm. and that's really not what pages are for, but the posts should be used for that. And, and, and so then we ended up with all sorts of pages to manage. And if you get, you, you, so you end up, so you got to think a little bit about when you're structuring the content on the site of all these different pages. So how, how are you going to, what are they all going to be and how are you going to manage this? Because you don't want to end up, you know, three years later with 500 pages and then you try to go in and do something and it's, it's just too much to, t to deal with. Um, so you need to think a little, like po posts, you can search for categories on them. Pages, it's really hard. There's no categories on them. There. So you really can't, you know, you really can't go through and find things. Swipe. Oh, we have on swipe. Oh, yeah, that's a tablet formatting. So it's a yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure if it does anything or not. <laughs> yeah. So it's enabled. It's enabled. So I should probably go to the. Uh, you open up a tablet and you go to this site. It'll look different than what you'd look at it on a computer. All right. Yep. It it's, uh, just creates some subtle differences there. So if I go to the site to GHTC, it will be different. Should look different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, we are going to um, allow you to build your site and with assistance from us if you need it. Right. That's basically what it is. So if you want to you come in here and you want to get your site up and running, um, put, put it together, uh, we'll be here to help you. We're going to build the same thing or we're going to build all different things? Whatever you guys want to build. Yep. 
Yeah. 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 Do you want us to use the IEEE um, site that you met, Ed mentioned earlier, or do you want well, us to create? Well, well, you can, if you want to create your own, yeah. then that's fine. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you just want to play around with the IEEE site just to get some experience with stuff, you know, that's fine too. That's why we, we created those up so that people could, could do, you know, do some stuff. If you like on WordPress.com, you're restricted and, and kind of, you can do more, mostly focus on content instead of <coughs> other kind of things. Could, could I suggest we start from, say, step zero? Yeah, you know, just yeah. one <coughs> after yeah. another, right. and right. then uh, we have right. a site coming right. up. Right. Well, and well, then everybody working on their own thing, and uh, you know, yeah. we cannot share your time. Yeah. Okay. So if you could, you know, yeah. we, one after another, <coughs> and we, we get a site coming up. Right. Well, one that thing that we could one yeah. thing we could do is everybody's got a computer is. Uh, you could we can get everybody to install WAMP or one of the one of the uh, website server things on your own computer, mm -hmm. right? And then and then what you can do is then you can download the WordPress and you can install it right on your own computer. Yeah. And no. then you so then you have like a development machine. So yeah. you've got yeah, WordPress yeah. there that you can play with, right. and 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 you can try all sorts of stuff out because it's not it's not the live site that you're going to have. And then, and then you could save content and put it on a live right, site we'll later. We all do the same thing. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. We all do the same yeah, you could all do that if you want. You bring us yeah. along one step on after mm -hmm. another. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. then, and then you've got then you've got your own little private WordPress sitting right. here on on. You got, so you're, you 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 become your own ISP in that that case. The other problem is that that's not. Your your machine's not really a server on the internet, so right. you, you're not going to make a site that you know is going to be able to be seen on the internet. But you've got a development system that you can work on, okay. you know, at, at your local at your your, your yeah. Can so you maybe easily port that onto the online. Uh, well, you can. I mean, you, you, can you, export, you, you yeah. could export the yeah. you could export the posts. So if you created some posts, you could export the posts and and, and import them later on into. But you've got to have a site online to let you import stuff, and I'm not sure WordPress. Well, so lets yeah, you do so that. I don't think it does. And the other the other aspect is if you use a plugin on your local that you don't have access to on the, the hosted, right, that right. would be a oh. problem as well. So, yep. Did you say that WAMP is the name of the development environment you're talking about? Yeah, it's Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Okay. <laughs> and so no, not it Windows. It's it's um, what is it? W. I don't know what the W. There's XAMP. Okay. Which is oh so yeah from so, W so for Windows a, yeah yeah W for Windows and X for uh, for uh, um, Linux. So it's Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Because right, so those are those are those are the things you need. You need the web server, you need the database, you need the PHP interpreter. No, you know, I'm saying you were talking about a development environment that we could possibly yeah, yeah, use yeah, tomorrow. Right. That's what it's called. Right. It's yeah. for local environment. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you basically you install a WAMP server on your own machine, and so you make in your C directory you make a www or a WAMP. I make it like a WAMP, and then and then there's a tree under there. There's some there's some uh, uh, default folders for for the programs for the, and then there's another one called www, which is where your website goes in, and then you put in your WordPress in there. Okay. And then you go to localhost and do name your thing and you can see it. Yeah. You're probably gonna have to walk people through that. Yeah, we should probably I'm, I'm gonna I don't have it on this one now. So so tonight my homework will be <laughs> to go through the steps and maybe make like a PowerPoint of what goes on. So yeah. what is BWP recap? Oh that's another that's it's another uh, uh, better WordPress recapture. Better WordPress, D B W the better recapture. WordPress recapture. What does that mean? So the captcha is that that the, image that you have to enter the code in yeah. for spam on a contact oh, form. Okay. Yeah. Let me go back to the plugins. And so we want to do maybe about a million of them. And we're gonna get <laughs> 447. 447 plugins have something to do with CAPTCHA. Yeah. So there's CAPTCHA, there's image CAPTCHA, that the people keep trying to work on. Is this by most popular? Let's, let's do the popular ones. 
So a Kismet is the one that, uh, but that doesn't do a caption. But that chat. So this Jetpack, Jetpack is something that. So this is sort of an API thing because Jetpack is something that you can install that hooks your your blog up to WordPress.com. I think they removed the search. Did they? I mean, yeah, you, you're, you're not you're looking for capture right now. Oh, what, oh, oh! I'm just, just looking at the most popular. popular. <laughs> Why do they do that? That's not good. All right, so let's go back to the plugins. Okay. So they have caption tie. Um, I was hoping that I could get I could get it sorted by uh, most popular, but it doesn't. Uh, oh, maybe I don't know if you toggle the keyword thing. Actually, I don't know. No, it it just goes back to plugins and browses for popular. Um, oh, key, let's try keyword here. Yeah. Okay, Author tag. Let's do. No, I don't think that makes any difference. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, they they don't have any way to to sort these by. Uh, so here's a capture for gravity forms. So so this is a, we have the gravity forms lets you style. Oh, that's what I was going to show them. Lets you style things. Uh, so there's a lot of the captions. So I let's look, let's look, let's look at recapture. One thing I was going to call, show them the CSS. Pages at redirection. Oh, because I did tags. All right. Let's go back. I don't want a tag. I want a keyword. Oh, okay. Recaption. Plugin directory recaption. Excuse me. I don't know. There's like too many of them to to uh, to look through. One thing I did want to show you is <clears throat> we've mentioned the CSS settings. There settings. Oh yeah. So where is under appearance? I think. Oh, appearance. That's right. Appearance. Custom CSS manager. Okay. So what we've done here is okay. The uh, so I change. I had to change the height of the footer, which it, it was, let's low, look at the site in the new one, new new tab, new tab. So what we did is we had a whole bunch of stuff. Had a whole bunch of stuff down here in the footer. We had like an extra. We had another line of stuff, and it was in the height was too small, and stuff was not showing up. So I changed the I changed the uh, uh, here we are. So here here's a thing in Firefox. I hope there's a thing in Firefox. Okay, did it run it? Okay, that's not what I want. I want the uh, oh I wanted the inspector. Okay, I I get an inspector. All right. Anyway, I'll have to check. I have I have a an, uh, an app an add-on to Firefox that lets you inspect all of your uh, all of your uh, your stuff. No, that's not didn't bring up what I wanted. Anyway, so what I did is we we need to make that bigger. So I went so there's this plugin called the custom custom CSS manager. So I went and I found out what what the the div type in HTML was for the footer, and I and I went in and I and I made it. And I said, okay, let's change it to 80, right? So I made it bigger because the default was like 60 or something like that. So I made it 80. Uh, for example, so the drop down menus that we have here were not supported. We're not supported by the theme. But if I when I if I go and I looked at the code, all all of the 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 uh, so all, everything was there to do them, although they didn't work. Because it's in the CSS, and I, I actually I had a guy who uh, who helped me with this. I, I ran to somebody, and I sent him a thing, and he said, "Okay, here's what you do: is you go in and you as you add these um, on list items for all of these things in the navigation menu." And I did that, and I added that, and now drop down menus work. Okay, so you can do things with the CSS to add add some. Add things, uh, and here, here we we 
We, there were some spacing issues with the uh, calendar widget. They're, they were too wide, so we had to, we had to fix the, the width of those. And uh, so you, you can fix things. Let's, let me find here, let me go. I want to go to, yes, where is it? This one. Because <clears throat> I, I need to fix this site because this has that problem where the, oh, they took the calendar off. No, did they take the calendar? Look, uh, there's a calendar down middle right, or middle left, or you passed it. Go, there's a link right there, right under your mouse. Oh, okay, okay, there's nothing in the calendar. Maybe it's the team, you know. One, one, one side, anyway, I, put the, I turned it, put the calendar in, and it's sticking out. Into the into the thing, so I'm going to have to go and take the CSS and and fix the uh, and fix it. So anyway, so there so that's a, that's a sort of a useful kind of plugin if you run into some kind of issues with your site. Or uh, we had I had one site that I was using and the the, the the header font was like this big and I said that's way too big. <laughs> so you can go and you can change things without without having to uh, to go in and do anything with the code. I'm probably getting too deep, <laughs> but you have to know CSS a little bit. Yeah, I don't that. know that much about. It. I know very rudimentary CSS. I I do Google to yeah. CSS, and there's some website that's the, the 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 help guide for CSS, and I look in there to to, try to figure out what to do with it. Yeah. So I I don't I don't do it uh, I do it very very often. But that's and so what you do is this this gets applied after all the other CSS mm -hmm. so that this this ends up overriding things. I was hoping I had the uh, the inspector thing. That's more cool mm -hmm. to look look at the inspector thing, but I don't have that. I'll have to add that tomorrow tonight. Oh, table press. Here's table press. So we have several of these things. So we had, the, this was left from last year. We had, uh, so if I go, let me see. Um, so there's a program schedule. Sorry. Yeah. You can change your website. Yeah, we're about to change your website. You have access to the tool. Yeah. I can use the little text column. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is it, is it a right. So so you you can get pretty you can you can put a pretty big table in here. So this is so this is basically got all of the times of the day. How'd you get it for free? And this this is to span to you know to span columns. And so uh, and then uh, let me go uh, let me go up go find the web page uh, for that. I'll go, let me go to the archives. And we'll look for 2014. Where was the schedule? It's probably program. Technical program. PDF, PDF, PDF. Yeah, let's, okay. uh, let's go on there. Thank you very much. You bet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there it is. So there, see that. So that's that's that table that I had. So that's what it looks like. And so, see, because see down here it says edit. So this is to edit that that table. So so you can do, you know, re so you, reusable you things. Get so many different. Levels of this when you do yeah. when you did the table. Yeah. So that's all the call span, call span. Yeah. So yeah. So call span. Right. Call span. Columns. 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 So, so it has so it has five oh, columns. So there's five columns. Yeah. A set of five columns. Yeah. It's like it's like emerging cells in Excel basically. So how do you get to this page? So this is. Well, it's this page here. Press. Oh. So uh, that's in table press. So that's not table a, press. You go yeah. to table press. It will show. Right, right, oh. right, right. Yeah. And so the nice thing about the, this yeah. is I can go here, okay. and I can I can export this.
content of this table as a CSV file, so I can pull it out out of out of the out of there, and, and then I can upload it. So I could I could change it and upload it, or I could go in here. So can you slide those uh, up and down things A B C D like a slide left and right? Yeah, you can resort them, and then so the only problem with this is. You if you if you're putting a URL in, you've got to you've got to type this in. There's yeah. no way there's no way to add a URL. There's no interface to do that. I'm talking about the, the width. Can I just slide them? Oh, can you make that wider? These yeah, columns, yeah. like oh, in this okay, interface. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. oh, oh, what, what, what I did here I is I I, I, yeah. I can sort this, which is probably not the best thing yeah. to have okay. done. Yeah. I don't know if I control Z is yeah, going to so unsort it. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So obviously I don't want to yeah. do that because it's it's sorted everything. Uh, but I can insert an image. Yeah. Oh, I, apparently now I can do an I can insert a link, right. which I think they added. Or either that, I, I never figured out how to use it. Which version is your website for? Mm. Mm. What? They're all three. Points. They're all three points. Everybody's, uh, everybody's on. Yeah, yeah, everybody's oh. on the same uh, on the same uh, version. I'm going back to the dashboard. I don't want to. I don't want to change that. Yeah, we're all on uh, 3.9.3. Okay. So here, okay, let's look at this. There's six comments in the spam queue. So we'll just do this briefly, then we'll be done. So so here we are, Nike, Nikes, oh. Air Jordans, fake Christian something or other, <laughs> Nikes, something or other, something or other, right? So these these got through a kismet. So, so... Uh, and these are, oh, these are in spam, but they, these, these were all moved into spam, okay? So, so these were already, already taken care of uh, by Kismet. So there's no, there's no pending comments. Uh, these are the ones that are in spam. So what we can do is we can go empty the spam, and these will all go away. Yeah, boom. So, so uh, yeah. So if people are tired, we can. I think we should. I think. Right? We, I think. Yeah, I, I think, think this is five right. o'clock. Yeah. a good time to end. Yeah. Everybody's brain is full. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, so see you tomorrow. Thank you. If you'd like to come, nine o'clock. Thank you. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Build some website together. Yeah. yeah.